The Spanish Tragedy by Thomas Kidd. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Dramatis Personae Ghost of Andrea, a Spanish nobleman, and Hangman, read by Martin Giessen. Revenge, read by Avaí. King of Spain, read by Los Rolander. Cyprian, Duke of Castile, his brother, read by Algy Pag. Lorenzo, the Duke's son, read by Dublin Gothic. Bellimperia, Lorenzo's sister, and Isabella's maid. Read by Justine Wormsley. Viceroy of Portugal. Read by Nigel Boydell. And Jason Mills. Balthazar, his son. Read by Jeff Schwab. Hieronimo, Marshal of Spain. Read by Amy Graymore. Isabella, his wife, and boy. Read by Bev Stevens. Horatio, their son. Read by Max Schörlinger. Spanish general, deputy, and Don Basulto. Read by Marty Chris. Portuguese ambassador. Read by Lucy Perry. Alexandro, Portuguese nobleman. And Bazardo, a painter. Read by Algy Pug. Vilupo, Portuguese nobleman. And Don Pedro. Read by Todd. Pedringano, an imperious servant. Read by Liberty Stump. Christophil, an imperious custodian and messenger. Read by Carol Box. Lorenzo's page. Read by Cheyenne Darnell. Cerberine, Balthazar's servant and servant. Read by Christine G. Pedro. Hieronimo's servant. Read by Peter Macus. Jaques, Hieronimo's servant. Read by Todd. First nobleman and first Portingal. Read by Ernst Batinama. Second nobleman and second Portingal. Read by John Fricker. First watchman and first citizen. Read by Algy Pag second watchman and second citizen read by marty chris third watchman and third citizen read by todd narrated by elizabeth clatt end of dramatis personae act one of the spanish tragedy this librivox recording is in the public domain the Spanish Tragedy by Thomas Kidd. Act One. Scene One. Induction. Enter the ghost of Andrea, and with him, revenge. When this eternal substance of my soul did live imprisoned in my wanton flesh, each in their function serving others' need, I was a courtier in the Spanish court. My name was Don Andrea my descent though not ignoble yet inferior far to gracious fortunes of my tender youth for there in prime and pride of all my years by duteous service and deserving love in secret i possessed a worthy dame which hight sweet bel imperia by name but in the harvest of my summer joys death's winter nipped the blossoms of my bliss forcing divorce betwixt my love and me for in the late conflict with portingal my valour drew me into danger's mouth till life to death made passage through my wounds when i was slain my soul descended straight to pass the flowing stream of acheron 
but churlish charon only boatman there said that my rites of burial not performed i might not sit amongst his passengers ere sol had slept three nights in thetis lap and sleeked his smoking chariot in her flood by don horatio our night marshal's son my funerals and obsequies were done then was the ferryman of hell content to pass me over to the slimy strand that leads to fell avernus ugly waves there pleasing cerberus with honeyed speech i passed the perils of the foremost porch not far from hence amidst ten thousand souls sat minos iacus and radamanth to whom no sooner gan i make approach to crave a passport for my wandering ghost but minos in graven leaves of lottery drew forth the manner of my life and death this night quoth he both lived and died in love and for his love tried fortune of the wars and by war's fortune lost both love and life why then said iacus convey him hence to walk with lovers in our fields of love and spend the course of everlasting time under green myrtle trees and cypress shades no no said radamanth it were not well with loving souls to place a martialist he died in war and must to martial fields where wounded hector lives in lasting pain and achilles myrmidons do scour the plain then minos mildest censor of the three made this device to end the difference send him quoth he to our infernal king to doom him as best seems his majesty to this effect my passport straight was drawn in keeping on my way to pluto's court through dreadful shades of ever glooming night i saw more sights than thousand tongues can tell or pens can write or mortal hearts can think three ways there were that on the right hand side was ready way under the foresaid fields where lovers live and bloody martialists but either sort contained within his bounds the left hand path declining fearfully was ready downfall to the deepest hell where bloody furies shake their whips of steel and poor ixion turns an endless wheel where usurers are choked with melting gold and wantons are embraced with ugly snakes and murderers groan with never killing wounds and perjured whites scalded in boiling lead and all foul sins with torments overwhelmed twixt these two ways i trod the middle path which brought me to the fair elysian green in midst whereof there stands a stately tower the walls of brass the gates of adamant here finding pluto with his proserpine i showed my passport humbled on my knee whereat fair proserpine began to smile and begged that only she might give my doom pluto was pleased and sealed it with a kiss forthwith revenge she rounded thee in the ear and bade thee lead me through the gates of horn where dreams have passage in the silent night no sooner had she spoke but we were here i wot not how in twinkling of an eye then know andrea 
that thou art arrived where thou shalt see the author of thy death don balthazar the prince of portingal deprived of life by belimperia here sit we down to see the mystery and serve for chorus in this tragedy scene two the court of spain enter spanish king general castile and Geronimo. now say lord general how fares our camp all well my sovereign liege except some few that are deceased by fortune of the war but what portends thy cheerful countenance and posting to our presence thus in haste speak man hath fortune given us victory victory my liege and that with little loss our portingals will pay us tribute then tribute and wanted homage therewithal then blessed be heaven and guider of the heavens from whose fair influence such justice flows o mutum delecte deo tibi militat eta et conjurate curvato poplite gente succumbunt recti soro es victoria iuris thanks to my loving brother of castile but general unfold in brief discourse your former battle and your war success that adding all the pleasure of thy news unto the height of former happiness with deeper wage and greater dignity we may reward thy blissful chivalry where spain and portingal do jointly knit their frontiers leaning on each other's bound there met our armies in their proud array both furnished well both full of hope and fear both menacing alike with daring shows both vaunting sundry colours of device both cheerly sounding trumpets drums and fifes both raising dreadful clamours to the sky that valleys hills and rivers made rebound and heaven itself was frighted with the sound our battles both were pitched in squadron form each corner strongly fenced with wings of shot but ere we joined and came to push of pike i brought a squadron of our readiest shot from out our rearward to begin the fight they brought another wing to encounter us meanwhile our ordinance played on either side and captains strove to have their valours tried don pedro their chief horseman's colonel did with his cornet bravely make attempt to break the order of our battle wrecks but don rogiero worthy man of war marched forth against him with our musketeers and stopped the malice of his fell approach while they maintain hot skirmish to and fro both battles join and fall to handy blows their violent shot resembling the ocean's rage when roaring loud and with a swelling tide it beats upon the rampiers of huge rocks and gapes to swallow neighbour bounding lands now while bellona rageth here and there thick storms of bullets ran like winter's hail and shivered lances dark the troubled air peripeses cuspida cuspis arma sonant armis via periturca viro on every side drop captains to the ground and soldiers some ill maimed some slain outright here falls a body sundered from his head their legs and arms lie bleeding on the grass mingled with weapons and unbowelled steeds that scattering overspread the purple plain in all this turmoil three long hours and more the victory to neither part inclined till don andrea with his brave lanciers in their main battle made so great a breach that half dismayed the multitude retired but balthazar the portingal's young prince brought rescue and encouraged them to stay here hence the fight was eagerly renewed and in that conflict was andrea slain brave man at arms but weak to balthazar yet while the prince insulting over him breathed out proud vaunts sounding to our reproach friendship and hardy valour joined in one 
pricked forth horatio our knight marshal's son to challenge forth that prince in single fight not long between these twain the fight endured but straight the prince was beaten from his horse and forced to yield him prisoner to his foe when he was taken all the rest they fled and our carbines pursued them to the death till phoebus waving to the western deep our trumpeters were charged to sound retreat thanks good lord general for these good news and for some argument of more to come take this and wear it for thy sovereign's sake gives him his chain but tell me now hast thou confirmed a peace no peace my liege but peace conditional that if homage tribute be well paid the fury of your forces will be stayed and to this peace their viceroy hath subscribed gives the king a paper and made a solemn vow that during life his tribute shall be truly paid to spain these words these deeds become thy person well but now knight marshal frolic with thy king for tis thy son that wins this battle's prize long may he live to serve my sovereign liege and soon decay unless he serve my liege nor thou nor he shall die without reward a tucket afar off what means the warning of this trumpet's sound this tells me that your grace's men of war such as war's fortune hath rescued from death come marching on towards your royal seat to show themselves before your majesty for so i gave in charge at my depart whereby by demonstration shall appear that all except three hundred or few more are safe returned and by their foes enriched the army enters balthazar between lorenzo and horatio captive a gladsome sight i long to see them here they enter and pass by was that the warlike prince of portingal that by our nephew was in triumph led it was my liege the prince of portingal but what was he that on the other side held him by the arm as partner of the prize that was my son my gracious sovereign of whom though from his tender infancy my loving thoughts did never hope but well he never pleased his father's eyes till now nor filled my heart with overflowing joys go let them march once more about these walls that staying them we may confer and talk with our brave prisoner and his double guard hieronimo it greatly pleases us that in our victory thou have a share by virtue of thy worthy son's exploit enter again bring hither the young prince of portingal the rest march on but ere they be dismissed we will bestow on every soldier two ducats and on every leader ten that they may know our lodges welcomes them exeunt all but balthazar lorenzo and horatio welcome don balthazar welcome nephew and thou horatio thou art welcome too young prince although thy father's hard misdeeds deserve but evil measure at our hands yet shalt thou know that spain is honourable the trespass that my father made in peace is now controlled by fortune of the wars and cards once dealt it boots not ask why so his men are slain a weakening to his realm his colour seized a blot unto his name his son distressed a corsive to his heart these punishments may clear his late offence ay balthazar if you observe this truce our peace will grow the stronger for these wars meanwhile live thou though not in liberty yet free from bearing any servile joke for in our hearing thy deserts were great and in our sight thyself art gracious and i shall study to deserve this grace but tell me for their holding makes me doubt to which of these twain art thou prisoner to me my liege to me my sovereign this hand first took his courser by the reins but first my lance did put him from his horse i seized his weapon and enjoyed it first but first i forced him to lay his weapons down let go his arm upon our privilege they let him go say worthy prince to whether didst thou yield to him in courtesy to this perforce 
he spake me fair, this other gave me strokes. He promised life, this other threatened death. He won my love, this other conquered me. And, truth to say, I yield myself to both. But that I know your grace is just and wise, and might seem partial in this difference, enforced by nature and by law of arms. My tongue should plead for young Horatio's right. He hunted well, that was a lion's death, not he that in a garment wore his skin, so hares may pull dead lions by the beard. Content thee, Marshal, thou shalt have no wrong, and for thy sake thy son shall want no right. Will both abide the censure of my doom? I crave no better than your grace awards. Nor I, although I sit beside my right. Then, by my judgment, thus your strife shall end. You both deserve, and both shall have reward. Nephew, thou took'st his weapon and his horse. His weapons and his horse are thy reward. Horatio, thou didst force him first to yield. His ransom, therefore, is thy valour's fee. Appoint the sum, as you shall both agree. But, nephew, thou shalt have the prince in guard, for thine estate best fitteth such a guest. Horatius' house were small for all his train. Yet in regard thy substance passeth his, and that just guerdon may befall desert. To him we yield the armour of the prince. How likes Don Baltasar of this device? Right well, my liege, if this proviso were, that Don Horatio bear us company, whom I admire and love for chivalry. Horatio, leave him not that loves thee so. Now let us hence to see our soldiers paid, and feast our prisoner as our friendly guest. Exeunt. Scene three. The Court of Portugal. Enter Viceroy, Alexandro, Filippo. Is our ambassador dispatched for Spain? Two days, my liege, have passed since his depart. And tribute payment gone along with him? Ay, my good lord. Then rest we here a while in our unrest, And feed our sorrows with some inward sighs, For deepest cares break never into tears, And wherefore sit I in a regal throne? This better fits a wretch's endless moan falls to the ground yet this is higher than my fortunes reach and therefore better than my state deserves ay ay this earth image of melancholy seeks him whom fate adjudged to misery here let me lie now am i at my lowest quiescat in terra non abe un cadet in me can some sit vires fortuna nocendo Nil superes o jam posit obis magis. Fortune may bereave me of my crown. Here, take it now, let fortune do her worst. She will not rob me of this sable weed. Oh, no, she envies none but pleasant things. Such is the folly of despiteful chance. Fortune is blind and sees not my deserts. So is she deaf and hears not my laments. And could she hear? Yet is she wilful mad, and therefore will not pity my distress. Suppose she could pity me, what then? What help can be expected at her hands, whose foot is standing on a rolling stone, and mine more mutable than fickle winds? Why wail I then? Where's hope of no redress? Oh, yes, complaining makes my grief seem less. My late ambition hath disdained my faith. My breach of faith occasioned bloody wars. Those bloody wars have spent my treasure, and with my treasure my people's blood, and with their blood my joy and best beloved, my best beloved, my sweet and only son. Oh, wherefore went I not to war myself? The cause was mine. I might have died for both. My years were mellow, his but young and green. My death were natural but his was forced. No doubt, my liege, but still the prince survives. Survives, I? Where? In Spain, a prisoner by mischance of war. Then they have slain him for his father's fault. That were breached the common law of arms. They wreck no laws that meditate revenge. 
his ransom's worth will stay from foul revenge no if he lived the news would soon be here nay evil news fly faster still than good tell me no more of news for he's dead my sovereign pardon the author of ill news and i'll bewray the fortune of thy son speak on i'll guerdon thee whate'er it be mine ear is ready to receive ill news my heart grown hard against mischief's battery stand up i say and tell thy tale at large then hear that truth which these mine eyes have seen when both the army were in battle joined don balthazar amidst the thickest troops to win renown did wondrous feats of arms amongst the rest i saw him hand to hand in single fight with their lord general till alexandro that here counterfeits under the color of a duteous friend discharged his pistol at the prince's back as though he would have slain their general but therewithal don balthazar fell down and when he fell then we began to fly but had he lived the day had sure been ours o oh, wicked forgery o oh, traitorous miscreant hold thou thy peace but no villipo say where then became the carcass of my son i saw them drag it to the spanish tents ay ay my nightly dreams have told me this thou false unkind unthankful traitorous beast where had a balthazar offended thee that thou shouldst thus betray him to his foes was spain gold that bleared so thine eyes that thou couldst see no part of our deserts perchance because thou art turkra's lord thou hast some hope to wear this diadem if first my son and then myself were slain but thy ambitious thought shall break thy neck ay this was it that made thee spill his blood takes the crown and puts it on again but now i'll wear it till thy blood be spilt thou'lt chief dread sovereign to hear me speak away with him his sight is second hell keep him till we determine of his death if balthazar be dead he shall not live villipo follow us for thy reward exit viceroy thus have i with an envious forged tale deceived the king betrayed mine enemy and hope for guerdon of my villainy exit Scene four. Enter Horatio and Bellimperia. Signor Horatio, this is the place and hour wherein I must entreat thee to relate the circumstance of Don Andrea's death, who living was my garland's sweetest flower, and in his death hath buried my delights. For love of him and service to yourself, I nil refuse this heavy, doleful charge, yet tears and sighs i fear will hinder me when both our armies were enjoined in fight your worthy chevalier amidst the thickest for glorious cause still aiming at the fairest was at last by young don balthazar encountered hand to hand the fight was long their hearts were great their clamours menacing their strength alike their strokes both dangerous but wrath nemesis that wicked power envying at andrea's praise and worth cut short his life to end his praise and worth she she herself disguised in armor's mask as pallas was before proud pergamus brought in a fresh supply of halberdiers which paunched his horse and dinged him to the ground then young don balthazar with ruthless rage taking advantage of his foe's distress did finish what his halberdiers begun and left not till andrea's life was done then though too late incensed with just remorse i with my band set forth against the prince and brought him prisoner from his halberdiers would thou hast slain him that so slew my love but then was don andrea's carcass lost no that was it for which i chiefly strove nor stepped i back till i recovered him i took him up and wound him in my own arms and wheeling him unto my private tent there laid him down and dewed him with my tears and sighed and sorrowed as became a friend but neither friendly sorrow sighs nor tears could wean pale death from his usurped right yet this i did unless i could not do i saw him honoured with due funeral this scarf i plucked from off his lifeless arm 
and wear it in remembrance of my friend i know the scarf would he had kept it still for had he lived he would have kept it still and worn it for his bell imperious sake for twas my favour at his last depart but now wear thou it both for him and me for after him thou hast deserved it best but for thy kindness in his life and death be sure while bell imperia's life endures she will be don horatio's thankful friend and madam don horatio will not slack humbly to serve fair bell imperia but now if your good liking stand there too i'll crave your pardon to go seek the prince for so the duke your father gave me charge i go horatio leave me here alone for solitude best fits my cheerless mood exit horatio yet what avails to wail andrea's death from whence horatio proves my second love had he not loved andrea as he did he could not sit in bell imperious thoughts but how can love find harbour in my breast till i avenge the death of my beloved yes second love shall further my revenge i'll love horatio my andrea's friend the more to spite the prince that wrought his end and where don balthazar that slew my love himself now pleads for favour at my hands he shall in rigour of my just disdain reap long repentance for his murderous deed for what was it else but murderous cowardice so many to oppress one valiant knight without respect of honour in the fight and here he comes that murdered my delight enter lorenzo and balthazar sister what means this melancholy walk that for a while i wish no company but here the prince has come to visit you that argues that he lives in liberty no madam but in pleasing servitude your prison then belike is your conceit ay by conceit my freedom is enthralled then with conceit enlarge yourself again what if conceit have laid my heart to gauge pay that you borrowed and recover it i die if it return from whence it lies a heartless man and live a miracle ay lady love can work such miracles tush tush my lord let go these ambages and in plain terms acquaint her with your love what boots complaint when there's no remedy yes to your gracious self must i complain in whose fair answer lies my remedy on whose perfection all my thoughts attend on whose aspect mine eyes find beauty's bower in whose translucent breast my heart is lodged alas my lord these are but words of course and but device to drive me from this place she in going in lets fall her glove which horatio coming out takes up madam your glove thanks good horatio take it for thy pains signor horatio stooped in happy time i reap more grace than i deserved or hoped my lord be not dismayed for what is past you know that women oft are humorous these clouds will overblow with little wind let me alone i'll scatter them myself meanwhile let us devise to spend the time in some delightful sports and revelling the king my lords is coining hither straight to feast the portingal ambassador things were in readiness before i came then here it fits us to attend the king to welcome hither our ambassador and learn my father and my country's health scene five enter the banquet trumpets the king and ambassador see lord ambassador how spain entreats their prisoner balthasar thy viceroy's son we pleasure more in kindness than in wars sad is our king and portingal laments supposing that don balthasar is slain so am i slain by beauty's tyranny you see my lord how balthasar is slain i frolic with the duke of castile's son wrapped every hour in pleasures of the court and graced with favours of his majesty put off your greetings till our feast be done now come and sit with us and taste our cheer sit to the banquet 
sit down young prince you are our second guest brother sit down a nephew take your place signor horatio wait thou upon our cup for well them has deserved to be honoured now lordings fall to spain is portugal and portugal is spain we both are friends tribute is paid and we enjoy our right but where is old hieronimo our marshal he promised us in honour of our guest to grace our banquet with some pompous jest enter hieronimo with a drum three knights each his scutcheon then he fetches three kings they take their crowns and them captive hieronimo this mask contents mine eye although i sound not well the mystery the first armed knight that hung his scutcheon up he takes the scutcheon and gives it to the king was english robert earl of gloucester who when king stephen bore sway in albion arrived with five and twenty thousand men in portingal and by success of war enforced the king then but a saracen to bear the yoke of the english monarchy my lord of portingal by this you see that which may comfort both your king and you and make your late discomfort seem the less but say hieronimo what was the next the second knight that hung his scutcheon up he doth as he did before was edmund earl of kent and albion when english richard wore the diadem he came likewise and raised lisbon walls and took the king of portingal in fight for which and other such like service done he after was created duke of york this is another special argument that portugal may deign to bear your joke when it by little england hath been joked but now hieronimo what were the last the third and last not least in our account doing as before was as the rest of valiant englishmen brave john of gaunt the duke of lancaster as by his scutcheon plainly may appear he with a puissant army came to spain and took our king of castile prisoner this is an argument for our viceroy that spain may not insult for her success since english warriors likewise conquered spain and made them bow their knees to albion hieronimo i drink to thee for this device which hath pleased both the ambassador and me pledge me hieronimo if thou love thy king takes the cup of horatio my lord i fear we sit but overlong unless our dainties were more delicate but welcome are you to the best we have now let us in that you may be dispatched i think our counsel is already set exeunt omnis scene six ghost of andrea revenge oh, come we for this from depth of underground to see him feast that gave me my death's wound these pleasant sights are sorrow to my soul nothing but league and love and banqueting oh, come we for this from depth of underground to see him feast that gave me my death's wound these pleasant sights are sorrow to my soul nothing but league and love and banqueting be still andrea ere we go from hence i'll turn their friendship into fell despite their love to mortal hate their day to night their hope into despair their peace to war their joys to pain their bliss to misery end of act one Act Two of the Spanish Tragedy. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Spanish Tragedy by Thomas Kidd. Act Two. Scene One. Enter Lorenzo and Balthazar. My lord, though Bellimperia seem thus coy, let reason hold you in your wonted joy. In time the savage bull sustains the yoke, in time all haggard hawks will stoop to lure in time small wedges cleave the hardest oak in time the flint is pierced with softest shower and she in time will fall from her disdain and rue the sufferance of your friendly pain 
No, she is wilder and more hard withal than beast or bird or tree or stony wall. But wherefore blot I Belimperia's name? It is my fault, not she, that merits blame. My feature is not to content her sight. My words are rude and work her no delight. The lines I send her are but harsh and ill, such as do drop from Pan and Marcius' quill. My presents are not of sufficient cost, and being worthless, all my labors lost. Yet might she love me for my valiancy. Ay, but that's slandered by captivity. Yet might she love me to content her sire. Ay, but her reason masters her desire. Yet might she love me as her brother's friend. Ay, but her hopes aim at some other end. Yet might she love me to uprear her state. Ay, but perhaps she hopes some nobler mate. Yet might she love me as her beauty's thrall. Ay, but I fear she cannot love at all. My lord, for my sake leave this ecstasy, and doubt not but we'll find some remedy. Some cause there is that lets you not be loved. First that must needs be known, and then removed. What, if my sister loves some other knight? My summer's day will turn to winter's night. I have already found a stratagem, to sound the bottom of this doubtful theme. My lord, for once you shall be ruled by me. Hinder me not, whate'er you hear or see. By force or fair means will I cast about, to find the truth of all this question out. Ho, oh, Pedringano. Signor. Vien qui presto. Enter Pedringano. Hath your lordship any service to command me? Ay, Pedringano, service of import, and not to spend the time in trifling words. Thus stands the case. It is not long thou know'st, since I did shield thee from my father's wrath, for thy conveyance in Andrea's love, for which thou wert adjudged to punishment. I stood betwixt thee and thy punishment, and since thou know'st how I have favoured thee, now to these favours will I add reward, not with fair words, but store of golden coin, and lands and living joined with dignities, if thou but satisfy my just demand. Tell truth, and have me for thy lasting friend. Whate'er it be your lordship shall demand, my bounden duty bids me tell the truth, if case it lie in me to tell the truth. Then, Pedringano, this is my demand, whom loves my sister Belimperia, for she reposeth all her trust in thee. Speak, man, and gain both friendship and reward, I mean, whom loves she in Andrea's place? Alas, my lord, since Don Andrea's death I have no credit with her as before, and therefore know not if she love or no. Nay, if thou dally, then I am thy foe. Draws his sword. And fear shall force what friendship cannot win. Thy death shall bury what thy life conceals. Thou diest for more esteeming her than me. Oh, stay, my lord. Yet speak the truth, and I will guerdon thee, and shield thee from whatever can ensue and will conceal whatever proceeds from thee. But if thou dally once again, thou diest. If Madame Belimperia be in love. What villain, if and ands? Oh, stay, my lord, she loves Horatio. Balthazar starts back. What, Don Horatio, our knight marshal's son? Even him, my lord. Now say, but how knowest thou he is her love? And thou shalt find me kind and liberal. Stand up, I say, and fearless tell the truth. She sent him letters, which myself perused, full fraught with lines and arguments of love, preferring him before Prince Balthazar. Swear on this cross that what thou sayest is true, and that thou wilt conceal what thou hast told. I swear to both by him that made us all. In hope thine oath is true, here's thy reward. But if I prove thee perjured and unjust, this very sword, whereon thou took'st thine oath, shall be the worker of thy tragedy. What I have said is true and shall for me be still concealed from Belimperia. Besides, your honour's liberality deserves my duteous service, even till death. Let this be all that thou shalt do for me. Be watchful when and where these lovers meet, and give me notice in some secret sort. I will, my lord. Then shalt thou find that I am liberal. Thou knowest that I can more advance thy state than she. Be therefore wise, and fail me not. Go and attend her as thy custom is, lest absence make her think thou dost amiss. Exit Pedringano. 
Why so? Tam armis quam ingenio. Where words prevail not, violence prevails. But gold doth more than either of them both. How likes Prince Balthazar this stratagem? Both well and ill, it makes me glad and sad. Glad that I know the hinderer of my love. Sad that I fear she hates me whom I love. Glad that I know on whom to be revenged. Sad that she'll fly me if I take revenge. Yet must I take revenge or die myself, for love resisted grows impatient. I think Horatio be my destined plague. First in his hand he brandished a sword, and with that sword he fiercely waged war, and in that war he gave me dangerous wounds, and by those wounds he forced me to yield, and by my yielding I became his slave. Now in his mouth he carries pleasing words, which pleasing words do harbor sweet conceits, which sweet conceits are limed with sly deceits, which sly deceits smooth Bell Imperia's ears, and through her ears dive down into her heart, and in her heart set him where I should stand. Thus hath he taken my body by his force, and now by slight would captivate my soul. But in his fall I'll tempt the destinies, and either lose my life or win my love. Let's go, my lord. Your staying stays revenge. Do you but follow me and gain your love? Her favour must be won by his remove. Exeunt. Scene two. Enter Horatio and Bellimperia. Now, madam, since by favour of your love our hidden smoke is turned to open flame, and that with looks and words we feed our thought to chief contents, where more cannot be had, thus, in the midst of love's fair blandishments, why show you sign of inward languishments? Pedrangano showeth all to the prince and Lorenzo, placing them in secret. My heart, sweet friend, is like a ship at sea. She wisheth port, where riding all at ease, she may repair what stormy times have worn, and leaning on the shore may sing with joy. That pleasure follows pain, and bliss annoy. Possession of thy love is the only port, wherein my heart with fears and hopes long tossed. Each hour doth wish and long to make resort, there to repair the joys that it hath lost, and sitting safe to sing in Cupid's choir, that sweetest bliss is crown of love's desire. Balthazar and Lorenzo above. O oh, sleep, mine eyes, see not my love profaned, be deaf, my ears, bear not my discontent, die, heart, and other joys what thou deserv'st. Why stands Horatio, speechless all this while? The less I speak, the more I meditate. But whereon dost thou chiefly meditate? On dangers past, and pleasures to ensue. On pleasures past, and dangers to ensue. What dangers, what pleasures dost thou mean? Dangers of war, and pleasures of our love. Dangers of death, but pleasures none at all. Let dangers go, thy war shall be with me, but such a war as breaks no bond of peace. Speak thou fair words, I'll cross them with fair words. Send thou sweet looks, I'll meet them with sweet looks. Write loving lines, I'll answer loving lines. Give me a kiss, I'll counter-check thy kiss. Be this our warring peace, or peaceful war. But, gracious madam, then appoint the field where trial of this war shall first be made. Ambitious villain, how his boldness grows! Then be thy father's pleasant bower the field, where first we vowed a mutual amity. The court were dangerous, that place is safe. Our hour shall be when Vesper begins to rise, that summons home distressful travellers. Then none shall hear us but the harmless birds. Harply the gentle nightingale shall carol us asleep, ere we beware, and singing with the prickle at her breast, tell our delight and mirthful dalliance. Till then 
each hour will seem a year and more but honey sweet and honourable love return we now into your father's sight dangerous suspicion waits on our delight ay danger mixed with jealous despite shall send thy soul into eternal night scene three enter the king of spain portingal ambassador don cyprian etc brother of castile to the prince's love what says your daughter bel imperium although she coy it as becomes her kind and yet dissemble that she loves the prince i doubt not ay but she will stoop in time and were she froward which she will not be yet herein shall she follow my advice which is to love him or forego my love then lord ambassador of portingal advise thy king to make this marriage up for strengthening of our late confirmed league i know no better means to make us friends her dowry shall be large and liberal besides that she is daughter and a half heir unto our brother here don cyprian and shall enjoy the moiety of his land i'll grace her marriage with an uncle's gift and this it is in case the match go forward the tribute which you pay shall be released and if by balthasar she have a son he shall enjoy the kingdom after us i'll make the motion to my sovereign liege and work it if my counsel may prevail do so my lord and if he give consent i hope his presence here will honour us in celebration of the nuptial day and let himself determine of the time wilt please your grace to command me aught beside commend me to the king and so farewell but where's prince balthasar to take his leave that is performed already my good lord amongst the rest of what you have in charge the prince's ransom must not be forgot that's none of mine but his that took him prisoner and well his forwardness deserves reward it was horatio our knight marshal's son between us there's a price already pitched and shall be sent with all convenient speed then once again farewell my lord farewell my lord of castile and the rest exit now brother you must take some little pains to win fair belimperia from her will young virgins must be ruled by their friends the prince is amiable and loves her well if she neglect him and forego his love she both will wrong her own estate and ours therefore whilst i do entertain the prince with greatest pleasure that our court affords endeavour you to win your daughter's thought if she give back all this will come to naught scene four enter horatio bel imperia and pedrangano now that the night begins with sable wings to overcloud the brightness of the sun and that in darkness pleasures may be done come bel imperia let us to the bower and there in safety pass a pleasant hour i follow thee my love and will not back although my fainting heart controls my soul why make you doubt of pedringano's faith no he is as trusty as my second self go pedringano watch without the gate and let us know if any make approach pedringano aside instead of watching i'll deserve more gold by fetching don lorenzo to this match exit pedringano what means my love i know not what myself and yet my heart foretells me some mischance sweet say not so fair fortune is our friend and heavens have shut up day to pleasure us the stars thou seest hold back their twinkling shine and luna hides herself to pleasure us thou hast prevailed i'll conquer my misdoubt and in thy love and counsel drown my fear i fear no more love now is all my thoughts why sit we not for pleasure asketh ease the more thou sitst with these leafy bowers the more will flora deck it with her flowers ay but if flora spy horatio here her jealous eye will think i sit too near hark madam how the birds recall by night for joy that bel imperia sits in sight no cupid counterfeits the nightingale 
To frame sweet music to Horatio's tale. If Cupid sing, then Venus is not far. Ay, thou art Venus, or some fairer star. If I be Venus, thou must needs be Mars. And where Mars reigneth, there must needs be wars. <laughs> then, thus begin our wars. Put forth thy hand, that it may combat with my ruder hand. Set forth thy foot to try the push of mine. But first my looks shall combat against thine. Then ward thyself, I dart this kiss at thee. Thus I retort the dart thou threwst at me. Nay, then to gain the glory of the field, My twining arms shall yoke and make thee yield. Nay, then my arms are large and strong withal, Thus elms by vines are compassed till they fall. O oh, let me go, for in my troubled eyes Now mayest thou read that life in passion dies. O oh, stay a while, and I will die with thee, So shalt thou yield, and yet have conquered me. Who's there? Petrangano? We are betrayed. Enter Lorenzo, Balthazar, Cerberine, Petrangano, disguised. My lord, away with her. Take her aside. O oh, sir, forbear, your valour is already tried. Quickly dispatch, my masters. They hang him in the arbour. What? Will you murder me? Ay, thus and thus. These are the fruits of love. They stab him. O oh, save his life! Let me die for him! O oh, save him! Brother, save him, Balthazar! I loved Horatio. But he loved not me. But Balthazar loves Belimperia. Although his life were still ambitious proud, Yet is he at the highest, now he is dead. Murder! Murder! Help! Hieronimo! Help! Come, stop her mouth. Away with her. Exeunt. Scene V. Enter Hieronimo in his shirt, etc. What outcries pluck me from my naked bed? and chill my throbbing heart with trembling fear, which never danger yet could daunt before. Who calls Hieronimo? Speak, here I am. I did not slumber, therefore it was no dream. No, no, it was some woman cried for help, and here within this garden did she cry, and in this garden must I rescue her. But stay, what murderous spectacle is this? A man hanged up and all the murderers gone. And in my bower to lay the guilt on me. This place was made for pleasure, not for death. He cuts him down. Those garments that he wears I oft have seen. Alas, it is Horatio, my sweet son. Oh, no, but he that Willem was my son. Oh, was it thou that call'st me from my bed? Oh, speak, if any spark of life remain. I am thy father. Who hath slain my son? What savage monster not of human kind hath here been glutted with thy harmless blood, and left thy bloody corpse dishonoured here, for me amidst these dark and deathful shades, to drown thee with an ocean of my tears? O oh, heavens, why made you night to cover sin? By day this deed of darkness had not been. O oh, earth, why didst thou not in time devour the vile profaner of this sacred bower? O oh, poor Horatio! What hadst thou misdone, to lease thy life ere life was new begun? O wicked butcher, whatsoe'er thou wert, how could thou strangle virtue and desert? Ah, me, most wretched that have lost my joy in leasing my Horatio, my sweet boy. Enter Isabella. My husband's absence makes my heart to throb. Hieronimo! Here, Isabella, help me to lament. For sighs are stopped, and all my tears are spent. What world of grief! My son Horatio! Oh, where's the author of this endless woe? To know the author were some ease of grief, For in revenge my heart would find relief. Then is he gone? And is my son gone too? Oh, gush out tears, fountains and floods of tears, Blows, sighs, and raise an everlasting storm, for outrage fits our cursed wretchedness. Ay, me, Hieronimo, sweet husband, speak. He supped with us to-night, frolic and merry, 
and said he would go visit Balthazar at the Duke's palace. There the prince doth lodge. He had no custom to stay out so late. He may be in his chamber. Some go see. Rodrigo, ho! Enter Pedro and Jaques. Ah, me, he raves, sweet Hieronimo. True, all Spain takes note of it. Besides, he is so generally beloved. His majesty the other day did grace him with waiting on his cup. These be favours which do assure me he cannot be short-lived. Sweet Hieronimo! I wonder how this fellow got his clothes. Sirrah, sirrah, I'll know the truth of all. Jacques, run to the Duke of Castile presently, and bid my son Horatio to come home. I and his mother have had strange dreams to-night. Do you hear me, sir? Aye, sir. Well, sir, be gone. Pedro, come hither. Knowest thou who this is? Too well, sir. Too well? Who? Who is it? Peace, Isabella. Nay, blush not, man. It is my lord, Horatio. Ha, ha, St. James, but this doth make me laugh, that there are more deluded than myself. Deluded? Aye, I would have sworn myself within this hour that this had been my son Horatio. His garments are so like. Ha, are they not great persuasions? Oh, would to God it were not so. Were not, Isabella. Dost thou dream it is? Can thy soft bosom entertain a thought that such a black deed of mischief should be done on one so pure and spotless as our son? Away, I am ashamed. Dear Hieronimo, cast a more serious eye upon thy grief. Weak apprehension gives but weak belief. It was a man, sure, that was hanged up here. A youth, as I remember. I cut him down. If it should prove my son now, after all say you say you light lend me a taper let me look again oh god confusion mischief torment death and hell drop all your stings at once in my cold bosom that now is stiff with horror kill me quickly be gracious to me thou infective knight and drop this deed of murder down on me in my waste of grief with thy large darkness and let me not survive to see the light may put me in the mind i had a son oh sweet horatio oh my dearest son how strangely had i lost my way to grief sweet lovely rose ill plucked before thy time fair worthy son not conquered but betrayed i'll kiss thee now for words with tears are stayed and i'll close up the glasses of his sight for once these eyes were only my delight Seest thou this handkerchief besmeared with blood? It shall not from me till I take revenge. Seest thou those wounds that yet are bleeding fresh? I'll not entomb them till I have revenge. Then will I joy mist my discontent. Till then my sorrow never shall be spent. The heavens are just. Murder cannot be hid. Time is the author both of truth and right, and time will bring this treachery to light. Meanwhile, good Isabella, cease thy plaints, or at the least dissemble them a while. So shall we sooner find the practice out, and learn by whom all this was brought about. Come, Isabel, now let us take him up. They take him up. And bear him in from out this cursed place. I'll say his dirge. Singing fits not this case. O eloquis mihi quas pulchrum ver educat herbas. Hieronimo sets his breast unto his sword. Misciat et nostra data medicina dolori. Aut sequi faciant anorum obliuia sucos praebiat. Ipsi metum magnum quequonque per orbum. Gramina sol pulchris effert in luminous oris. Ipsi bibam quiquid meditator saga venini quiquid et ebarum vi caeca nenia nectet omnia popetia letem quoque dum semel omnis nostra in extincto moriator pectore sensus ergo tuos oculos nomquam mia vita videbo et tua perpetuus sepaliwit luminous omnis Amoria tecum, sic, sic juvat ire subumbras, at tamen absistam properato cedere leto, 
ne mortam vindicta tuam tum nulla sequator here he throws it from him and bears the body away scene six ghost of andrea revenge <sighs> brought'st thou me hither to increase my pain i looked that balthazar should have been slain but tis my friend horatio that is slain and the abuse fair bellimperia on whom i doted more than all the world because she loved me more than all the world thou talkst of harvest when the corn is green the end is crown of every work well done the sickle comes not till the corn be ripe be still and ere i lead thee from this place i'll show thee balthazar in heavy case end of act two act three of the spanish tragedy this librivox recording is in the public domain the spanish tragedy by thomas kidd act three Scene one, the court of Portugal. Enter Viceroy of Portugal, nobles, Alexandro, Villupo. In fortunate condition of kings, seated amidst so many helpless doubts, first we are placed upon extremest height, and oft supplanted with exceeding hate, but ever subject to the wheel of chance, and at our highest never joy we so, as we both doubt and dread our overthrow so striveth not the waves with sundry winds as fortune toileth in the affairs of kings that would be feared yet fear to be beloved sith fear or love to kings is flattery for instance lordings look upon your king by hate deprived of his dearest son the only hope of our successive line i had not thought that alexandro's heart had been envenomed with such extreme hate but now i see that words have several works and there's no credit in the countenance no for my lord had you beheld the train that feigned love had coloured in his looks when he in camp consorted balthazar far more inconstant had you thought the sun that hourly coast the centre of the earth than alexandro's purpose to the prince no more villapo thou hast said enough and with thy words thou slayest our wounded thoughts nor shall i longer dally with the world procrastinating alexandro's death go some of you and fetch the traitor forth that as he is condemned he may die Enter Alexandro with a nobleman and halberts. In such extremes will naught but patience serve. But in extremes what patience shall I use? Nor discontents it me to leave the world, With whom there nothing can prevail but wrong. Yet hope the best. Tis heaven is my hope. As for the earth, it is too much in fact To yield me hope of any of her mould. Why linger ye? Bring forth that daring fiend and let him die for his accursed deed not that i fear the extremity of death for nobles cannot stoop to servile fear do i o king thus discontented live but this o oh, this torments my labouring soul that thus i die suspected of a sin whereof as heavens have known my secret thoughts so am i free from this suggestion no more i say to the tortures when bind him and burn his body in those flames they bind him to the stake that shall prefigure those unquenched fires of phlegethon prepared for his soul my guiltless death will be avenged on thee on thee viluppo that hath malice thus or for thy meed hast falsely me accused nay alexandro if thou menace me i'll lend a hand to send thee to the lake where those thy words shall perish with thy works injurious traitor monstrous homicide enter ambassador stay hold a while and here with pardon of his majesty lay hands upon Villupo. ambassador what news hath urged this sudden entrance no sovereign lord that balthazar doth live what sayest thou liveth balthazar our son your highness's son lord balthazar doth live and well entreated in the court of spain humbly commends him to your majesty these eyes beheld, and these my followers, with these, the letters of the king's commends. Gives him letters. Are happy witnesses of his highness's health. The king looks on the letters and proceeds. Thy son doth live. Your tribute is received. 
Thy peace is made, and we are satisfied. The rest resolve upon us things proposed for both our honours and thy benefit. These are his highness's father articles. He gives him more letters. Accursed wretch, to intimate these ills against the life and reputation of noble Alexandro. Come, my lord, unbind him. Let him unbind thee that is bound to death, to make a quittal for thy discontent. They unbind him. Dread lord, in kindness you could do no less upon report of such a damned fact. But thus we see our innocence hath saved the hopeless life which thou, Vilupo, sought by thy suggestions to have massacred. Say, false Vilupo, wherefore didst thou thus falsely betray Lord Alexandro's life? Him, whom thou knowest that no unkindness else but even the slaughter of our dearest son could once have moved us to have misconceived. Say, treacherous Vilupo, tell the king, wherein hath Alexandro used thee ill? Rent with remembrance of so foul a deed, my guilty soul submits me to thy doom. For not for Alexandro's injuries, but for reward and hope to be preferred, thus I have shamelessly hazarded his life. Which villain shall be ransomed with thy death, and not so mean a torment as we here devised for him who thou saidst slew our son, but with the bitterest torments and extremes that may be yet invented for thine end? Alexandro seems to entreat. Entreat me not. Go, take the traitor hence. Exit, Filippo. And Alexandro, let us honour thee, with public notice of thy loyalty, to end those things articulated here by our great lord, the mighty king of Spain, we with our council will deliberate. Come, Alexandro, keep us company. Exeunt. Scene two. Enter Hieronimo. O oh, eyes! No eyes but fountains fraught with tears. O oh, life! No life but lively form of death. O oh, world! No world but mass of public wrongs, confused and filled with murder and misdeeds. O oh, sacred heavens! If this unhallowed deed, if this inhuman and barbarous attempt, if this incomparable murder, thus of mine, but now no more, my son, shall unrevealed and unrevenged pass, how should we term your dealings to be just? if you unjustly deal with those that in your justice trust. The night, sad secretary to my moans, with direful visions, wakes my vexed soul, and with the wounds of my distressful son, solicits me for notice of his death. The ugly fiends do sally forth of hell, and frame my steps to unfrequented paths, and fear my heart with fierce inflamed thoughts. The cloudy day my discontents records, early begins to register my dreams, and drive me forth to seek the murderer. Eyes, life, world, heavens, hell, night and day, see, search, shoe, send some man, some mean that may. A letter falleth. What's here? A letter? Tush, it is not so. A letter written to Hieronimo. Red ink. For want of ink, receive this bloody writ. Me hath my hapless brother hid from thee. Revenge thyself on Balthazar and him. For these were they that murdered thy son, Hieronimo revenge Horatio's death, and better fare than Bel Imperior doth. What means this unexpected miracle? My son slain by Lorenzo and the prince? What cause had they Horatio to malign? Or what might move thee, Bel Imperior, to accuse thy brother, had he been the mean? Hieronimo, beware! Thou art betrayed, and to entrap thy life this train is laid. Advise thee, therefore, be not credulous. This is devised to endanger thee, that thou by this Lorenzo shouldest accuse, and he, for thy dishonour done, should draw thy life in question and thy name in hate. Dear was the life of my beloved son, and of his death behooves me be revenged. Then has it not thine own, Hieronimo, but live to effect thy resolution. I therefore will by circumstances try what I can gather to confirm this writ, and hearkening near the Duke of Castile's house, close if I can, with Bel Imperia, to listen more, but nothing to be ray. Enter Pedrangano. Now, Pedrangano. Now, Hieronimo. Where's thy lady? I know not. Here's my lord. Enter Lorenzo. How now? Who's this? Hieronimo? My lord. He asketh for my lady Bel Imperia. What to do, Hieronimo? The duke my father hath, upon some disgrace, a while removed her hence. But if it be aught I may inform her of, tell me, Hieronimo, 
and I let her know it. Nay, nay, my lord, I thank you. It shall not need. I had a suit unto her, but too late, and her disgrace makes me unfortunate. Why so, Hieronimo? Use me. Oh, no, my lord. I dare not. It must not be. I humbly thank your lordship. Why, then, farewell. My grief no heart, my thoughts no tongue can tell. Exit. Come hither, Pedrangano. Seest thou this? My lord, I see it, and suspect it, too. This is that damned villain Cerberine, that hath, I fear, revealed Horatio's death. My lord, he could not, t'was so lately done, and since he hath not left my company. Admit he hath not, his conditions such as fear or flattering words may make him false. I know his humour, and therewith repent that e'er I used him in this enterprise. But Pedrangano, to prevent the worst, and cause I know thee secret as my soul, here for thy further satisfaction take thou this. Gives him more gold. And hearken to me, thus it is devised. This night thou must, and prithee so resolve. Meet Cerberine at St. Luigi's Park. Thou know'st tis here hard by, behind the house. There take thy stand, and see thou strike him sure. For die he must, if we do mean to live. But how shall Cerberine be there, my lord? Let me alone. I'll send to him to meet the prince and me, where thou must do this deed. It shall be done, my lord, it shall be done, and I'll go arm myself to meet him there. When things shall alter, as I hope they will, then shalt thou mount for this. Thou knowest my mind. Exit Pedrangano. Cela Ieron. Enter page. My lord? Go, sirrah, to Cerberine, and bid him forth with meet the prince and me at St. Luigi's Park, behind the house. This evening, boy. I go, my lord. But, sirrah, let the hour be eight o'clock. Bid him not fail. I fly, my lord. Exit. Now to confirm the complot thou hast cast of all these practices, I'll spread the watch upon precise commandment from the king, strongly to guard the place where Pedringano this night shall murder hapless Cerberine. Thus must we work that will avoid distrust. Thus must we practice to prevent a mishap, and thus one ill another must expulse. This sly inquiry of Hieronimo for Belimperia breeds suspicion, and this suspicion bodes a further ill. As for myself, I know my secret fault, and so do they. But I have dealt for them. They that for coin their souls endangered, to save my life, for coin shall venture theirs. And better it's that base companions die, than by their life to hazard our good haps nor shall they live for me to fear their faith. I'll trust myself, myself shall be my friend, for die they shall. Slaves are ordained to no other end. Scene three. Enter Pedrangano with a pistol. Now, Pedrangano, bid thy pistol hold, and hold on, fortune. Once more favour me. Give but success to mine attempting spirit, and let me shift for taking of mine aim. Here is the gold. This is the gold proposed. It is no dream that I adventure for, but Pedringano is possessed thereof. And he that would not strain his conscience for him that thus his liberal purse hath stretched, unworthy such a favour, may he fail, and wishing want, when such as I prevail. As for the fear of apprehension, I know, if need should be, my noble lord will stand between me and ensuing harms. Besides, this place is free from all suspect. Here, therefore, will I stay, and take my stand. Enter the watch. We wonder much to what intent it is that we are thus expressly charged to watch. Tis by commandment in the king's own name. But we were never wont to watch and ward so near the duke, his brother's house before. Content yourself. Stand close. There's somewhat in't. Enter Cerberine. Here, Cerberine, attend and stay thy pace. For here did Don Lorenzo's page appoint that thou by his command shouldst meet with him. How fit a place, if one were so disposed. Methinks this corner is too close with one. Here comes the bird that I must seize upon. Now, Pedringano, or never, play the man. I wonder that his lordship stay so long. Or wherefore should he send for me so late? For this, Cerberine, and thou shalt have it. Shoots the dag. So there he lies. My promise is performed. Hark, gentlemen, this is a pistol shot. And here's one slain. 
stay the murderer now by the sorrows of the souls in hell he strives with the watch who first lays hands on me i'll be his priest sirrah confess and there in play the priest why hast thou thus unkindly killed the man why because he walked abroad so late come sir you had been better kept your bed than have committed this misdeed so late come to the marshals with the murderer on to hieronimo's help me here to bring the murdered body with us too hieronimo carry me before whom you will whatever he be i'll answer him and you and do your worst for i defy you all exeunt scene four enter lorenzo and balthazar how now my lord what makes you rise so soon fear of preventing our mishaps too late what mischief is it that we not mistrust our greatest ills we least mistrust my lord and unexpected harms do hurt us most why tell me don lorenzo tell me man if aught concerns our honour and your own nor you nor me my lord but both in one for i suspect and the presumption's great that by those base confederates in our fault touching the death of don horatio we are betrayed to old hieronimo betrayed lorenzo tush it cannot be a guilty conscience urged with the thought of former evils easily cannot err i am persuaded and dissuade me not that all's revealed to hieronimo and therefore know that i have cast it thus enter page but here's the page how now what news with thee my lord cerberine is slain who cerberine my man your highness's man my lord speak page who murdered him he that is apprehended for the fact who patron gano is cerberine slain that loved his lord so well injurious villain murderer of his friend hath patron gano murdered cerberine my lord let me entreat you to take the pains to exasperate and hasten his revenge with your complaints unto my lord the king this their dissension breeds a greater doubt assure thee don lorenzo he shall die or else his highness hardly shall deny meanwhile i'll haste the martial sessions for die he shall for this his damned deed exit balthazar why so this fits our former policy and thus experience bids the wise to deal i lay the plot he prosecutes the point i set the trap he breaks the worthless twigs and sees not that wherewith the bird was limbed thus hopeful men that mean to hold their own must look like fowlers to their dearest friends he runs to kill whom i have helped to catch and no man knows it was my reaching fetch tis hard to trust unto a multitude or any one in mine opinion when men themselves their secrets will reveal enter a messenger with a letter boy my lord what's he i have a letter to your lordship from whence from pedringano that's imprisoned so he is imprisoned then ay my good lord what would he with us he writes us here to stand a good lord and help him in distress tell him i have his letters know his mind and what we may let him assure him all fellow be gone my boy shall follow thee exit messenger this works like wax yet once more try thy wits boy go convey this purse to pedringano thou knowest the prison closely give it him and be advised that none be thereabout bid him be merry still but secret and though the martial sessions be to-day bid him not doubt of his delivery tell him his pardon is already signed and thereon bid him boldly be resolved for were he ready to be turned off as tis my will the uttermost be tried thou with his pardon shalt attend him still show him this box tell him his pardon's int but open it not and if thou lov'st thy life but let him wisely keep his hopes unknown he shall not want while don lorenzo lives away i go my lord i run but sirrah see that this be cleanly done exit page now stands our fortune on a tickle point and now or never ends lorenzo's doubts one only thing is unaffected yet and that's to see the executioner but to what end i list not trust the air with utterance of our pretence therein for fear the privy whisperings of the wind convey our words amongst unfriendly ears that lie too open to advantages e quel che voglio io nessun lo sa intendo io quel mi bastara exit scene five enter boy with the box 
my master hath forbidden me to look in this box and by my troth tis likely if he had not warned me i should not have had so much idle time for we men's kind in our minority are like women in their uncertainty that they are most forbidden they will soonest attempt so i now by my bare honesty here's nothing but the bare empty box were it not sin against secrecy i would say it were a piece of gentlemanlike knavery i must go to pedringano and tell him his pardon is in this box nay i would have sworn it had i not seen the contrary i cannot choose but smile to think how the villain will flout the gallows scorn the audience and descant on the hangman and all presuming of his pardon from hence wilt not be an odd jest for me to stand and grace every jest he makes pointing my finger at this box as who would say mock on here's thy warrant is t not a scurvy jest that a man should jest himself to death alas poor pedringano i am in a sort sorry for thee but if i should be hanged with thee i cannot weep exit scene six enter hieronymo and the deputy thus must we toil in other men's extremes that know not how to remedy our own and do them justice when unjustly we for all our wrongs can compass no redress but shall i never live to see the day that i may come by justice of the heavens to know the cause that may my cares allay this toils my body this consumeth age that only i to all men just must be and neither gods nor men be just to me worthy heronimo your office asks a care to punish such as do transgress so is it my duty to regard his death who when he lived deserved my dearest blood but come for that we came for let's begin for here lies that which bids me to be gone enter officers boy and pedrangano with a letter in his hand bound bring forth the prisoner for the court is set gramercy boy but it was time to come for i had written to my lord anew a nearer matter that concerneth him for fear his lordship had forgotten me but sith he hath remembered me so well come 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 on when shall we to this gear stand forth thou monster murderer of men in hand for satisfaction of the world confess thy folly and repent thy fault for there's thy place of execution this is short work well to your marshalship first i confess nor fear i death therefore i am the man twas i slew sir Berine. but sir then you think this shall be the place where we shall satisfy you for this gear ay pedigrano now i think not so peace impudent for thou shalt find it so for blood with blood shall while i sit as judge be satisfied and the law discharged and though myself cannot receive the like yet will i see that others have their right dispatch the faults approved and confessed and by our law he is condemned to die come on sir are you ready to do what my fine officious knave to go to this gear oh sir you are too forward thou wouldst fain furnish me with a halter to disfurnish me of my habit so i should go out of this gear my raiment into that gear the rope but hangman now i spy your knavery i'll not change without boot that's flat come sir so then i must up no remedy yes but there shall be for my coming down indeed here's a remedy for that how be turned off ay truly come are you ready i pray sir dispatch the day goes away what do you hang by the hour if you do i may chance to break your old custom faith you have reason for i am like to break your young neck dost thou mock me hangman pray god i be not preserved to break your knave's pate for this alas sir you are a foot too low to reach it and i hope you will never grow so high while i am in the office sirrah dost see yonder boy with the box in his hand what he that points to it with his finger ay that companion i know him not but what of him 
Dost thou think to live till his old doublet will make thee a new truss? Aye, and many a fair year after, to truss up many an honester man than either thou or he. What hath he in his box, as thou thinkest? Faith I cannot tell, nor I care not greatly. Methinks you should rather hearken to your soul's health. Why, sir hangman, I take it that that is good for the body is likewise good for the soul. And it may be in that box is balm for both. Oh, well, thou art even the merriest piece of man's flesh that e'er groaned at my office door. Is your roguery become an office with a knave's name? Ay, and that shall all they witness that see you seal it with a thief's name. I prithee request this good company to pray with me. Ay, marry, sir, this is a good motion. My masters, you see here's a good fellow. Nay, nay, now I remember me. Let them alone till some other time, for now I have no great need. I have not seen a wretch so impudent, O oh, monstrous times where murderers set so light, and where the soul that should be shrined in heaven solely delights in interdicted things, still wandering in the thorny passages that intercepts itself of happiness. Murder, O oh, bloody monster! God forbid a fault so foul should scape unpunished. Dispatch and see this execution done. This makes me to remember thee, my son. Exit Hieronimo. Nay, soft, no haste. Why, wherefore stay you? Have you hope of life? Why, I. As how? Why, rascal, by my pardon from the king. Oh, stand you on that. Then you shall off with this. <clears throat> he turns him off. <clears throat> so, executioner, convey him hence but let his body be unburied let not the earth be choked or infect with that which heaven contends and men neglect Exeunt. scene seven enter hieronimo where shall i run to breathe abroad my woes my woes whose weight hath wearied the earth or mine exclaims that have surcharged the air with ceaseless plaints for my deceased son the blustering winds conspiring with my words at my lament have moved the leafless trees disrobed the meadows of their flowered green made mountains marsh with spring tides of my tears and broken through the brazen gates of hell yet still tormented is my tortured soul with broken sighs and restless passions that winged mount and hovering in the air beat at the windows of the brightest heavens soliciting for justice and revenge but they are placed in those imperial heights where counter mirrored with walls of diamond i find the place impregnable and they resist my woes and give my words no way enter hangman with a letter oh lord sir god bless you sir the man sir pedergard sir hey that was so full of merry conceits well what of him oh lord sir he went the wrong way the fellow had a fair commission to the contrary sir here is his passport i pray you sir we have done him wrong i warrant thee give it me you will stand between the gallows and me ay ay oh, i thank your lord worship exit hangman and yet though somewhat nearer me concerns i will to ease the grief that i sustain take truce with sorrow while i read on this my lord, I write as mine extremes required, that you would labour my delivery. If you neglect, my life is desperate, and in my death I shall reveal the troth. You know, my lord, I slew him for your sake, and was confederate with the prince in you, won by rewards and hopeful promises. I hope to murder Don Horatio, too. Hope he to murder mine Horatio, and actors in the accursed tragedy wast thou, Lorenzo Balthazar, and thou? of whom my son my son deserved so well what have i heard what have mine eyes beheld o oh, sacred heavens may it come to pass that such a monstrous and detested deed so closely smothered and so long concealed shall thus by this be venged or revealed now see i what i durst not then suspect that bell imperia's letter was not feigned nor feigned she though falsely they have wronged both her myself horatio and themselves now may i make compare twixt hers and this 
of every accident I ne'er could find till now, and now I feelingly perceive they did what heaven unpunished would not leave. O oh, false Lorenzo, are these thy flattering looks? Is this the honour that them didst my son? And Balthazar, bane to thy soul and me, was this the ransom he reserved thee for? Woe to the cause of these constrained wars! Woe to thy baseness and captivity! Woe to thy birth, thy body, and thy soul, thy cursed father, and thy conquered self! And banned with bitter execrations be the day and place where he did pity thee! But wherefore waste I mine unfruitful words, when not but blood will satisfy my woes? I will go plain me to my lord the king, and cry aloud for justice through the court, wearing the flints with these my withered feet, and either purchase justice by entreats, or tire them all with my revenging threats. Exit. Scene eight. Enter Isabella and her maid. So that you say this herb will purge the eye, and this the head? Ah, but none of them will purge the heart. No, there's no medicine left for my disease, nor any physic to recure the dead. She runs lunatic. Horatio! Oh, where's Horatio? Good madam, affright not thus yourself with outrage for your son Horatio. He sleeps in quiet in the Elysian fields. Why did I not give you gowns and goodly things? Bought you a whistle and whipstock too, to be revenged on their villainies? Madam, these humours do torment my soul. My soul, poor soul! Thou talkst of things, thou knowest not what. My soul hath silver wings that mounts me up unto the highest heavens. To hen, ay, there sits my Horatio, backed with a troop of fiery cherubins, dancing about his newly heated wounds, singing sweet hymns and chanting henley notes. Rare harmony to greet his innocence, that died, I died a mirror in our days. But say, where shall I find the men, the murderers that slew Horatio? Whither shall I run to find them out that murdered my son? Exeunt. Scene 9. Bellimperia at a window. What means this outrage that is offered me? Why am I thus sequestered from the court? No notice. Shall I not know the cause of these my secret and suspicious ills? Accursed brother! Unkind murderer, why bendest thou thus thy mind to martyr me? Hieronimo, why writ I of thy wrongs? Or why art thou so slack in thy revenge? Andrea, O oh, Andrea, that thou sawest me for thy friend Horatio handled thus, and him for me thus causeless murdered. Well, force per force. I must constrain myself to patience, and apply me to the time, till heaven, as I have hoped, shall set me free. Enter Christophel. Come, Madam Bellimperia, this may not be. Exeunt. Scene 10. Enter Lorenzo, Balthazar, and the page. Boy, talk no farther. Thus far things go well. Thou art assured that thou sawst him dead. Or else, my lord, I live not. That's enough. As for his resolution and his end, leave that to him with whom he saw John's now. Here, take my ring, and give it Christopher, and bid him let my sister be enlarged, and bring her hither straight. Exit page. This that I did was for a policy, to smooth and keep the murder secret, which, as a nine days wonder, being overblown, my gentle sister will I now enlarge. And time, Lorenzo, for my lord the duke, you heard, inquired for her yesternight. Why, my lord, I hope you heard me say, sufficient reason why she kept away. But that's all one, my lord, you love her? Ay. Then in your love beware, deal cunningly, salve all suspicions, only soothe me up. And if she hap to stand on terms with us, as for her sweetheart and concealment so, jest with her gently. Under feigned jest are things concealed that else would breed unrest. But here she comes. Enter Bellimperia. Now, sister. No, thou art no brother but an enemy. Else wouldst thou not have used thy sister so, first to affright me with thy weapons drawn, and with extremes abuse my company, 
and then to harry me like whirlwind's rage amidst a crew of thy confederates and clap me up where none might come at me nor i at any to reveal my wrongs what madding fury did possess thy wits or wherein is it that i offended thee i advise you better bel imperia for i have done you no disparagement unless by more discretion than deserved i sought to save your honour and mine own mine honour why lorenzo wherein is it that i neglect my reputation so as you or any need to rescue it his highness and my father were resolved to come confer with old Geronimo concerning certain matters of estate that by the viceroy was determined and wherein was my honour touched in that have patience bel imperia hear the rest me next in sight his messenger they sent to give him notice that they were so nigh now when i came consorted with the prince and unexpected in an arbour there found bel imperia with horatio how then why then remembering that old disgrace which you for don andrea had endured and now were likely longer to sustain by being found so meanly accompanied thought rather for i knew no readier mean to thrust horatio forth my father's way and carry yon obscurely somewhere else lest that his highness should have found you there even so my lord and you are witness that this is true which he entreateth of you gentle brother forged this for my sake and you my lord were made his instrument a work of worth worthy the noting too but what's the cause that you concolded me since your melancholy sister since the news of your first favourite don andrea's death my father's old wrath hath exasperate and better wast for you being in disgrace to absent yourself and give his fury place but why had i no notice of his ire that were to add more fuel to your fire who burnt like etna for andrea's loss hath not my father then inquired for me sister he hath and thus excused i thee he whispereth in her ear but bel imperia see the gentle prince look on thy love behold young balthazar whose passions by thy presence are increased and in whose melancholy thou mayst see thy hate his love thy flight his following thee brother you are become an orator i know not i by what experience too politic for me past all compare since last i saw you but content yourself the prince is meditating higher things tis of thy beauty then that conquers kings of those thy tresses ariadne's twines wherewith my liberty thou hast surprised of that thine ivory front my sorrow's map wherein i see no haven to rest my hope to love and fear and both at once my lord in my conceit are things of more import than women's wits are to be busied with tis i that love whom bel imperia but i that fear whom bel imperia fear yourself ay brother how as those that what they love are loath and fear to lose then fair let balthazar your keeper be no balthazar doth fear as well as we et tremolo metui pavidum juncer tomorum est vanunt stolide prodigionis opus nay and you argue things so cunningly We'll go continue this discourse at court. Led by the lodestar of her heavenly looks, Wends poor oppressed Balthazar, As o'er the mountains walks the wanderer, Incertain to effect his pilgrimage. Exeunt. Scene 11. Enter two Portingals, and Hieronimo meets them. By your leave, sir. Tis neither as you think, nor as you think, nor as you think, your wide all these slippers are not mine they were my son horatio's my son and what a son a thing begot within a pair of minutes thereabout a lump bred up in darkness and doth serve to ballast these light creatures we call women and at nine months end creeps forth to light what is there yet in a son to make a father dote rave or run mad being born it pouts cries and breathes teeth what is there yet in a son he must be fed be taught to go and speak ay or yet why not a man love a calf as well or melt in passion or a frisking kid as for a son 
methinks a young bacon or a fine little smooth horse colt should move a man as much as doth the sun for one of these in very little time will grow to some good use whereas a son the more he grows in stature and in years the more unsquared unbevelled he appears reckons his parents among the rank of fools strikes care upon their heads with his mad riots makes them look old before they meet with age this is a son and what a loss were this considered truly oh but my horatio grew out of reach of these insatiate humours he loved his loving parents he was my comfort and his mother's joy the very arm that did hold up our house our hopes were stored up in him none but a damned murderer could hate him he had not seen the back of nineteen year when his strong arm unhorsed the proud prince balthazar and his great mind too full of honour took him to his mercy that valiant but ignoble portingal well heaven is heaven still and there is nemesis and furies and things called whips and they sometimes do meet with murderers they do not always scape that is some comfort ay 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 and then time steals on and steals and steals till violence leaps forth like thunder wrapped in a ball of fire and so doth bring confusion to them all good leave have you nay i pray you go for i'll leave you if you can leave me so pray you which is the next way to my lord the duke's the next way from me to his house we mean oh hard by tis yon house that you see you could not tell us if his son were there who my lord lorenzo i sir he goeth in at one door and comes out at another oh forbear for other talk for us far fitter were but if you be importunate to know the way to him and where to find him out then list to me and i'll resolve your doubt there is a path upon your left hand side that leadeth from a guilty conscience unto a forest of distrust and fear a darksome place and dangerous to pass there shall you meet with melancholy thoughts whose baleful humours if you but uphold it will conduct you to despair and death whose rocky cliffs when you have once beheld within a huge dale of lasting night that kindled with the world's iniquities doth cast up filthy and detested fumes not far from thence where murderers have built a habitation for their cursed souls there in a brazen cauldron fixed by jove in his fell wrath upon a self of flame yourselves shall find lorenzo bathing him in boiling lead and blood of innocence ha 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 why ha 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 farewell good ha 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 exit doubtless this man is passing lunatic or imperfection of his age doth make him dote come let's away to seek my lord the duke scene twelve enter hieronimo with a poniard in one hand and a rope in the other now sir perhaps i come and see the king the king sees me and fain would hear my suit why is not this a strange and seld seen thing that standest by with toys should strike me mute go to i see their ships and say no more hieronimo tis time for thee to trudge down by the dale that flows with purple gore standeth a fiery tower there sits a judge upon a seat of steel and molten brass and twixt his teeth he holds a firebrand that leads on to the lake where hell doth stand away hieronimo to him be gone he'll do thee justice for horatio's death turn down this path thou shalt be with him straight all this and then thou needest not take thy breath this way or that way i soft and fair not so for if i hang or kill myself let's know who will revenge horatio's mirth then no no fie no pardon me i'll none of that he flings away the dagger and halter this way i'll take and this way comes the king he takes them up again and here i'll have a fling at him that's flat and balthazar i'll be with thee to bring and thee lorenzo here's the king nay stay and here i hear there goes the hair away enter king ambassador castile and lorenzo now show ambassador what our viceroy saith hath he received the articles we sent justice o oh, justice to hieronimo back seest thou not the king is busy oh is he so who is he that interrupts our business not i hieronimo beware go by go by 
renowned king he hath received and read thy kingly proffers and thy promised league and as a man extremely overjoyed to hear his son so princely entertained whose death he had so solemnly bewailed this for thy further satisfaction and kingly love he kindly lets thee know first for the marriage of his princely son with belemperia thy beloved niece the news are more delightful to his soul than myrrh or incense to the offended heavens in person therefore will he come himself to see the marriage rite solemnized and in the presence of the court of spain to knit a sure inextricable band of kingly love and everlasting league betwixt the crowns of spain and portingal there will he give his crown to balthazar and make a queen of belimperia brother how like you this our viceroy's love no doubt my lord it is an argument of honourable care to keep his friend and wondrous zeal to balthazar his son nor am i least indebted to his grace that bends my liking to my daughter thus now last dread lord he hath his highness sent although he send not that his son return his ransom due to don horatio horatio who calls horatio and well remembered thank his majesty here see it given to horatio justice o oh, justice justice gentle king who is that hieronimo justice o oh, justice o oh, my son my son my son whom not can ransom or redeem hieronimo you are not well advised away lorenzo hinder me no more for thou hast made me bankrupt of my bliss give me my son you shall not ransom him away i'll rip the bowels of the earth he diggeth with his dagger then ferry over to the elysian plains and bring my son to show his deadly wounds stand from about me i'll make a pickaxe of my poniard and here surrender up my marshalship for i'll go marshal up the fiends in hell to be avenged on you all for this what means this outrage will none of you restrain his fury nay soft and fair you shall not need to strive for needs must he go that the devils drive exit what accident hath happened hieronimo i have not seen him to demean him so my gracious lord he is with extreme pride conceived of young horatio his son and covetous of having to himself the ransom of the young prince balthazar distract and in a manner lunatic believe me nephew we are sorry for it this is the love that fathers bear their sons but gentle brother go give to him this gold the prince's ransom let him have his due for what he hath horatio shall not want haply hieronimo hath need thereof but if he be thus helplessly distract tis requisite his office be resigned and given to one of more discretion we shall increase his melancholy so tis best that we see further in it first till when ourself will hold exempt the place and brother now bring in the ambassador that he may be a witness of the match twixt balthasar and bilimperia and that we may prefix a certain time wherein the marriage shall be solemnized that we may have thy lord the viceroy here therein your highness highly shall content his majesty that longs to hear from hence on then and hear you lord ambassador exeunt scene twelve a enter jaques and pedro i wonder pedro why our master thus at midnight sends us with our torches light when man and bird and beast are all at rest save those that watch for rape and bloody murder o oh, jacques know thou that our master's mind is much distraught since his horatio died and now his aged years should sleep and rest his heart and quiet like a desperate man grows lunatic and childish for his son sometimes as he doth at his table sit he speaks as if horatio stood by him then starting in a rage falls on the earth cries out horatio where is my horatio so that with extreme grief and cutting sorrow there is not left in him one inch of man see where he comes enter hieronimo i pry through every crevice of each wall look on each tree and search through every break beat at the bushes stamp our grand amorous dive in the water and stare up to heaven yet cannot i behold my son horatio how now who's there spirits spirits we are your servants that attend you sir what make you with your torches in the dark you bid us light them and attend you here no no you are deceived not i you are deceived 
Was I so mad to bid you light your torches now? Light me your torches at the mid of noon, when as the sun god rides in all his glory, light me your torches then. Then we burn daylight. Let it be burnt. Night is a murderous slut that would not have her treasons to be seen. And yonder pale-faced Hecat there the moon doth give consent to that is done in her darkness. And all those stars that gaze upon her face are aglets on her sleeve, pins on her train, and those that should be powerful and divine do sleep in darkness when they most should shine. Provoke them not, fair sir, with tempting words. The heavens are gracious, and your miseries and sorrows make you speak you know not what. Villain, thou liest, and thou dost not, but tell me I am mad. Thou liest, I am not mad. I know thee to be Pedro, and he Jaques. I'll prove it to thee, and were I mad, how could I? Where was she that same night when my Horatio was murdered? She should have shown, search thou the book, had the moon shown. In my boy's face there was a kind of grace, that I know. Nay, I do know. Had the murderer seen him, his weapon would have fallen and cut the earth. Had he been framed of naught but blood and death. Alack, when mischief doth it knows not what, what shall we say to mischief? Enter Isabella. Dear Hieronimo, come in adores. O oh, seek not means so to increase thy sorrow. Indeed, Isabella, we do nothing here. I do not cry. Ask Pedro, and ask Jaques. Not I, indeed. We are very merry, very merry. How? Be merry here. Be merry here. Is not this the place, and this, the very tree, where my Horatio died? Where he was murdered? Was. Do not say what. Let her weep it out. This was the tree. I said it of a kernel, and when our hot Spain could not let it grow, but that the infant and the human sap began to wither, duly twice a morning would I be sprinkling it with fountain water. At last it grew and grew, and bore and tore, till at the length it grew a gallows and did bear our son. It bore thy fruit and mine. A wicked, wicked plant! One knocks within at the door. See who knock there. It is a painter, sir. Bid him come in and paint some comfort, for surely there's none lives but painted comfort. Let him come in. One knows not what may chance. God's will that I should set this tree. But even so, masters ungrateful servants rear from naught, and then they hate them that did bring them up. Enter the painter. God bless you, sir. Wherefore? Why, thou scornful villain? How, where, or by what means should I be blessed? What wouldst thou have, good fellow? Justice, madam. O oh, ambitious beggar! Wouldst thou have that that lives not in the world? Why, all the undelved minds cannot buy an ounce of justice. Tis a jewel so inestimable. I tell thee, God hath engrossed all justice in his hands, and there is none but what comes from him. Oh! Then I see that God must right me for my murdered son. How? Was thy son murdered? Ay, sir, no man did hold his son so dear. What? Not as thine? That's a lie as massy as the earth. I had a son, whose least unvalued hair did weigh a thousand of thy sons, and he was murdered. Alas, sir, I had no more than he. Nor I. But this same one of mine was worth a legion. But all is one. Pedro, Jaques, go in adores. Isabella, go. And this good fellow here and I will range this hideous orchard up and down, like to two lions reaved of their young. Go in adores, I say. Exeunt. The painter and he sits down. Come, let's talk wisely now. Was thy son murdered? Ay, sir. So was mine. How dost take it? Art thou not sometimes mad? Is there no tricks that comes before thine eyes? O oh, Lord, yes, sir. Art a painter? Canst paint me a tear, or a wound, a groan, or a sigh? Canst paint me such a tree as this? Sir, I'm sure you have heard of my painting. My name's Bazardo. Bazardo, a for God an excellent fellow. 
Look you, sir, do you see? I'd have you paint me for my gallery, and your oil colors matted, and draw me five years younger than I am. Do you see, sir, that five years go? Let them go like the marshal of Spain. My wife, Isabella, standing by me, with a speaking look to my son Horatio, which should intend to this or some such like purpose. God bless thee, my sweet son. And my hand leaning upon his head, thus, sir, do you see? May it be done. Very well, sir. Nay, I pray, mark me, sir. Then, sir, would I have you paint me this tree, this very tree? Canst paint a doleful cry? Seemingly, sir. Nay, it should cry, but all is one. Will, sir, paint me a youth run through and through with villain swords hanging upon this tree? Canst thou draw a murderer? I'll warrant you, sir, I have the pattern of the most notorious villains that ever lived in old Spain. Oh, let them be worse, worse! Stretch thine art, and let their beards be of Judas his own colour, and let their eyebrows juddy over. In any case, observe that. Then, sir, after some violent noise, bring me forth in my shirt, in my gown under mine arm, in my torch in my hand, in my sword reared up thus, and with these words, what noise is this? Who calls here on him all? May it be done? Yea, sir. Well, sir, then bring me forth, bring me through alley and alley, still with a distracted countenance going along, and let my hair heave up my nightcap, let the clouds scowl, make the moon dark, the stars extinct, the winds blowing, the bells tolling, the owls shrieking, the toads croaking, the minutes jarring, and the clock striking twelve. And then at last, sir, starting, Behold a man hanging and tottering and tottering, as you know the wind will wave a man, and I with a trice to cut him down, and looking upon him by the advantage of my torch, find it to be my son Horatio. There may you show a passion, there you may show a passion. Draw me like old Priam of Troy, crying, The house is a fire, the house is a fire, as the torch over my head. Make me curse, make me rave, make me cry, make me mad, make me well again, make me curse hell, invocate heaven, and in the end, leave me in a trance, and so forth. And is this the end? Oh, no, there is no end. The end is death and madness. As I am never better than when I am mad, then methinks I am a brave fellow. Then I do wonders. But reason abuseth me, and there's the torment, there's the hell. At the last, sir, bring me to one of the murderers, were he as strong as Hector. Thus would I tear and drag him up and down. He beats the painter in, then comes out again with a book in his hand. Scene 13. Enter Hieronimo with a book in his hand. Vindicta mihi. Ay, heaven will be revenged of every ill, nor will they suffer murder unrepaid. Then stay, Hieronimo, attend their will, for mortal men may not appoint their time. Perchilis semper tutum est, celebribus eater. Strike and strike home where wrong is offered thee, for evils unto ills conductors be, and death's the worst of resolution. For he that thinks with patience to contend to quiet life, his life shall easily end. Fata si miseros juvant, habes salutem. Fata si vitum nejant, habes sepulcrum. If destiny thy miseries do ease, then hast thou health, and happy thou shalt be. If destiny deny thee life, Hieronimo, yet shalt thou be assured of a tomb. If neither, yet let this thy comfort be. Heaven covereth him that hath no burial. And to conclude, I will revenge his death. But how? Not as the vulgar wits of men, with open but inevitable ills, as by a secret, yet a certain mean, which under kinship will be cloaked best. Wise men will take their opportunity, closely and safely, fitting things to time. But in extremes advantage hath no time, and therefore all times fit not for revenge. Thus therefore will I rest me in unrest dissembling quiet in unquietness, not seeming that I know their villainies, that my simplicity may make them think 
that ignorantly I will let all slip. For ignorance I wot, and well they know. Remedium malorum iners est. Nor aught avails it me to menace them, who, as a wintry storm upon a plain, will bear me down with their nobility. No, no, Hieronimo, thou must enjoin thine eyes to observation and thy tongue to milder speeches than thy spirit affords, thy heart to patience and thy hands to rest, thy cap to courtesy and thy knee to bow, till to revenge thou know when, where, and how. A noise within. How now, what noise? What coil is that you keep? Enter a servant. Here are a sort of poor petitioners, that are importunate, and it shall please you, sir, that you should plead their cases to the king. That I should plead their several actions. Why, let them enter, and let me see them. Enter three citizens and an old man. So, I tell you this, for learning and for law, there is not any advocate in Spain that can prevail, or will take half the pain that he will, in pursuit of equity. Come near, you men that thus importune me aside now must i bear a face of gravity for thus i used before my marshalship to plead in causes as corregidor come on sirs what's the matter sir an action of battery mine of debt give place no sir mine is an action of the case mine an ejectione firme by a lease content you sirs are you determined that i should plead your several actions Ay, sir, and here's my declaration. And here's my band. And here's my lease. They give him papers. But wherefore stands yon silly man so mute, with mournful eyes and hands to heaven upreared? Come hither, father, let me know thy cause. O oh, worthy sir, my cause but slightly known, may move the hearts of warlike myrmidons, and melt the Corsic rocks with rueful tears. Say, father, tell me what's thy suit? No, sir, could my woes give way unto my most distressful words, then should I not in paper, as you see, with ink beray what blood began in me? What's here? The humble supplication of Don Basulto for his murdered son? I, sir. No, sir, it was my murdered son. Oh, my son, my son, oh, my son Horatio, but mine or thine, Basalto, be content. Here, take my handkerchief and wipe thine eyes, whilst wretched I and thy mishaps may see the lively portrait of my dying self. He draweth out a bloody napkin. Oh, no, not this! Horatio, this was thine, and when I dyed it in thy dearest blood, this was a token twixt thy soul and me, that of thy death revenged I should be. But here, take this and this, what my purse i this and that and all of them are thine for all as one are our extremities oh see the kindness of hidonimo this gentleness shows him a gentleman see see oh see thy shame hieronimo see here a loving father to his son behold the sorrows and the sad laments that he delivereth for his son's decease if love's effects so strive in lesser things if love enforce such moods in meaner wits, if love express such power in poor estates, he runny mo, when as a raging sea, tossed with the wind and tide, overturneth then the upper billows course of waves to keep, whilst lesser waters labour in the deep, then shamest thou not, he runny mo, to neglect the sweet revenge of thy Horatio? Though on this earth justice will not be found, I'll down to hell, and in this passion knock at the dismal gates of Pluto's court, getting by force, as once Alcides did, a troop of furies and tormenting hags, to torture Don Lorenzo and the rest. Yet, lest the triple-headed porter should deny my passage to the slimy strand, the Thracian poet, thou shalt counterfeit. Come on, old father, be my Orpheus, and if thou canst, no notes upon the harp, then sound the burden of thy sore heart's grief, till we do gain that proserpine may grant, revenge on them that murdered my son. Then will I rent and tear them thus and thus, shivering their limbs in pieces with my teeth. Tears the papers. Oh, sir, my declaration. Exit Hieronimo and they after. Save my bond. Enter Hieronimo. 
Save my bond. Alas, my lease! It cost me ten pound, and you, my lord, have torn the same. That cannot be, I gave it never a wound. Show me one drop of blood fall from the same. How is it possible I should slay it then? Tush, no, run after, catch me if you can. Exeunt all but the old man. Basulto remains till Hermonimo enters again, who, staring him in the face, speaks. And art thou come, Horatio, from the depth, to ask for justice in this upper earth, to tell thy father thou art unrevenged, to wring more tears from Isabella's eyes, whose lights are dimmed with overlong laments? Go back, my son, complain to Aeacus, for he is no justice. Gentle boy, be gone, for justice is exited from the earth. Hieronimo will bear thee company. Thy mother cries on righteous Radamanth for just revenge against the murderers. Alas, my lord, whence springs this troubled speech? But let me look on my Horatio. Sweet boy, how art thou changed in death's black shade? I had proserpine no pity on thy youth, but suffered thy fair crimson-coloured spring, with withered winter to be blasted thus. Horatio, thou art older than thy father. Ah, ruthless fate that favour thus transforms. Ah, my good lord, I am not your young son. What? Not my son? Thou then a fury art, sent from the empty kingdom of black night to summon me to make appearance before grim Minos and just Radamanth, to plague Hieronimo that is remiss, and seeks not vengeance for Horatio's death. I am a grieved man, and not a ghost that came for justice for my murdered son. Ay, now I know thee, now thou namest thy son. Thou art the lively image of my grief. Within thy face my sorrows I may see. Thy eyes are gummed with tears, thy cheeks are worn, thy forehead troubled, and thy muttering lips murmur sad words abruptly broken off. By force of windy sighs thy spirit breathes and all this sorrow riseth for thy son, and self-same sorrow feel I for my son. Come in, old man, thou shalt to Isabel, lean on my arm. I thee, thou me, shalt stay, and thou and I and she will sing a song, three parts in one, but all of discords framed. Talk not of chords, but let us now be gone, for with a chord Horatio was slain. Exeunt. Scene fourteen. Enter King of Spain, the Duke, Viceroy, and Lorenzo, Balthazar, Don Pedro, and Bellimperia. Go, brother, tis the Duke of Castile's cause. Salute the Viceroy in our name. I go. Go forth, Don Pedro, for thy nephew's sake, and greet the Duke of Castile. It shall be so. And now to meet these Portuguese. For as we now are, as so sometimes were these, kings and commanders of the Western Indies, welcome, brave viceroy, to the court of Spain, and welcome all his honourable train. Tis not unknown to us for why you come, or have so kingly crossed the seas. Sufficeth it in this we note the troth, and more than common love you lend to us. So is it that mine honourable niece, for it beseems us now that it be known, already is betrothed to Balthasar. And by appointment and our condescent, to-morrow are they to be married. To this intent we entertain thyself, thy followers, their pleasure, and our peace. Speak, men of Portingal, shall it be so? If ay, say so. If not, say flatly no. Renowned King, I come not as thou thinkst with doubtful followers, unresolved men, but such as have upon thine articles confirmed thy motion, and contented me. No, sovereign, I come to solemnize the marriage of thy beloved niece, fair Bellimperia, with my Balthazar. With thee, my son, whom sith I live to see, here take my crown, I give it her and thee, and let me live a solitary life, in ceaseless prayers, to think how strangely heaven hath thee preserved see brother see how nature strives in him come worthy viceroy and accompany thy friend with thine extremities a place more private fits this princely mood or here or where your highness thinks it good exeunt all but castile and lorenzo 
Scene 15. Castile, Lorenzo. Nay, stay, Lorenzo, let me talk with you. Seest thou this entertainment of these kings? I do, my lord, and joy to see the same. And knowest thou why this meeting is? For her, my lord, whom Balthazar doth love, and to confirm their promised marriage. She is thy sister? Who, Belimperia, I, my gracious lord, and this is the day that I have longed so happily to see. Thou wouldst be loath that any fault of thine should intercept her in her happiness? Heavens will not let Lorenzo err so much. Why, then, Lorenzo, listen to my words. It is suspected, and reported, too, that thou, Lorenzo, wrongest Tyronimo, and in his suits towards his majesty still keep'st him back, and seeks to cross his suit. That I, my lord? I tell thee, son, myself have heard it said, when, to my sorrow, I have been ashamed to answer for thee, though thou art my son. Lorenzo, knowest thou not the common love and kindness that Hieronimo hath won by his deserts within the court of Spain? Or seest thou not the king, my brother's care in his behalf, and to procure his health? Lorenzo, should thou thwart his passions, and he exclaim against thee to the king, What honour wert in this assembly, or what a scandal wert among the kings to hear Hieronimo exclaim on thee? Tell me, and look thou tell me truly, too, whence grows the ground of this report in court? My lord, it lies not in Lorenzo's power to stop the vulgar liberal of their tongue. A small advantage makes a water breach, and no man lives that long contenteth all. Myself have seen thee busy to keep back him and his supplications from the king. Yourself, my lord, had seen his passions, that ill beseemed the presence of a king, and for I pitied him in his distress, I held him thence with kind and courteous words, as free from malice to Hieronimo as to my soul, my lord. Hieronimo, my son, mistakes thee then. My gracious father, believe me, so he doth. But what's a silly man, distract in mind, to think upon the murder of his son? Alas, how easy is it for him to err! But for his satisfaction and the world's, to a good my lord, that Hieronimo and I were reconciled, if he misconstrue me. Lorenzo, thou hast said, it shall be so. Go one of you, and call Hieronimo. Enter Balthazar and Belimperia. Come, Belimperia, Balthazar's content, my sorrow's ease and sovereign of my bliss, sith heaven hath ordained thee to be mine, disperse those clouds and melancholy looks, and clear them up with those thy sun-bright eyes, wherein my hope and heaven's fair beauty lies. My looks, my lord, are fitting for my love, which new begun can show no brighter yet. New kindled flames should burn as morning sun. But not too fast, least heat and all be done. I see my lord, my father. Truce, my love, I'll go salute him. Welcome, Balthazar, welcome, brave prince, the pledge of Castile's peace, and welcome, Belle Imperia. How now, girls? Why comest thou sadly to salute us thus? Content thyself, for I am satisfied. It is not now as when Andrea lived. We have forgotten and forgiven that, and thou art graced with a happier love. But, Balthazar, here comes Hieronimo. I'll have a word with him. Enter Hieronimo and a servant. And where's the duke? Yonder. Even so. What new device have they devised, Trow? Pocas palabras, smiled as the lamb. Is it I will be revenged? No, I am not the man. Welcome, Hieronimo. Welcome, Hieronimo. Welcome, Hieronimo. My lords, I thank you for Horatio. Hieronimo, the reason that I sent to speak with you is this. What, so short? Then I'll be gone. I thank you for it. Nay, stay, Hieronimo. Go, call him son. Hieronimo, my father craves a word with you. With me, sir? Why, my lord, I thought you had done. No. Aside. Would he had. Hieronimo, I hear you find yourself aggrieved at my son, because you have not access unto the king, and say it is he that intercepts your suits. Why, is not this a miserable thing, my lord? Hieronimo, I hope you have no cause, 
and would be loath that one of your deserts should once have reason to suspect my son considering how i think of you myself your son lorenzo oh my noble lord the hope of spain mine honourable friend grant me the combat of them if they dare draws out his sword i'll meet him face to face to tell me so these be the scandalous reports of such as love not me and hate my lord too much should i suspect lorenzo would prevent or cross my suit that loved my son so well my lord i am ashamed it should be said hieronimo i never gave you cause my good lord i know you did not there then pause and for the satisfaction of the world hieronimo frequent my homely house the duke of castile cyprian's ancient seat and when thou wilt use me my son and it but here before prince balthazar and me embrace each other and be perfect friends ay marry my lord and shall friends quoth he see i'll be friends with you all especially with you my lovely lord for diverse causes it is fit for us that we be friends the world suspicious and men may think what we imagine not why this is friendly done hieronimo and that i hope old grudges are forgot what else it were a shame it would not be so come on hieronimo at my request let us entreat your company to-day exeunt your lordship's to command pa keep your way chi mi fa più carezze che non suole tradito miha o tradir mi vole exit scene sixteen enter ghost and revenge awake eristo cerberus awake solicit pluto gentle proserpine to combat acheron and erebus for ne'er by styx and phlegethon in hell or ferried charon to the fiery lake such fearful sights as poor andrea sees revenge awake awake for why awake revenge for thou art ill advised to sleep awake what them art warned to watch content thyself and do not trouble me awake revenge if love as love hath had have yet the power of prevalence in hell hieronimo with lorenzo is joined in league and intercepts our passage to revenge awake revenge or we are woe begone thus royal things ground what they have dreamed upon content thyself andrea though i sleep yet is my mood soliciting their souls sufficeth thee that poor hieronimo cannot forget his son horatio nor dies revenge although he sleep awhile for an unquiet quietness is faint and slumbering is a common worldly while behold andrea for an instance how revenge hath slept and then imagine thou what tis to be subject to destiny enter a dumb show awake revenge reveal this mystery lo the two first the nuptial torches bore as brightly burning as the midday sun but after them doth hymen high as fast clothed in sable and a saffron robe and blows them out and quencheth them with blood as discontent that things continue so sufficeth me thy meanings understood and thanks to thee and those infernal powers that will not tolerate a lover's woe rest thee for i will sit to see the rest then argue not for thou hast thy request exeunt end of act three act four of the spanish tragedy this librivox recording is in the public domain the Spanish Tragedy by Thomas Kidd. Act Four. 
Scene One. Enter Bellimperia and Hieronymo. Is this the love thou bearest, Horatio? Is this the kindness that thou counterfeits? Are these the fruits of thine incessant tears? Hieronymo, are these thy passions, thy protestations, and thy deep laments, that thou wert wont to weary men withal? O unkind father, O deceitful world, with what excuses canst thou show thyself from this dishonour and the hate of men, thus to neglect the loss and life of him whom both my letters and thine own belief assures thee to be causeless slaughtered? Hieronimo, for shame, Hieronimo, be not a history to after times of such ingratitude unto thy son unhappy mothers of such children then, but monstrous fathers to forget so soon the death of those whom they with care and cost have tended so, thus careless should be lost. Myself, a stranger in respect of thee, so loved his life as still I wish their deaths, nor shall his death be unrevenged by me, although I bear it out for fashion's sake for here i swear in sight of heaven and earth shouldst thou neglect the love thou shouldst retain and give it over and devise no more myself should send their hateful souls to hell that wrought his downfall with extremest death but may it be that bel imperia vows such revenge as she hath deigned to say why then i see that han applies our drift and all the saints do sit soliciting for vengeance on those cursed murtherers. Madam, tis true, and now I find it so. I found a letter written in your name, and in that letter how Horatio died. Pardon, oh, pardon, Bel Imperia, my fear and care in not believing it. Nor think I thoughtless, think upon a mean, to let his death be unrevenged at full. And here I vow, so you but give consent, and will conceal my resolution. I will ere long determine of their deaths, that causeless thus have murdered my son. Hieronimo, I will consent, conceal, and aught that may effect far thine avail, join with thee to revenge Horatio's death. On, then, and whatsoever I devise, let me entreat you, grace my practices, for why the plot's already in mine head. Here they are. Enter Balthazar and Lorenzo. How now, Hieronimo? What, courting Bellimperia? Ay, my lord, such courting as I promise you. She hath my heart, but you, my lord, have hers. But now, Hieronimo, or never, we are to entreat your help. My help? Why, my good lords, assure yourselves of me, for you have given me cause. I, by my faith, have you. It pleased you at the entertainment of the ambassador to grace the king so much as with a show. Now, were your study so well furnished, as for the passing of the first night's sport, to entertain my father with the like, or any such like pleasing motion, assure yourself it would content them well. Is this all? Aye, this is all. Why then, I'll fit you. Say no more. When I was young I gave my mind and plied myself to fruitless poetry, which, though it profit the professor not, Yet is it passing pleasing to the world. And how for that? Marry, my good lord, thus. And yet methinks you are too quick with us. When in Toledo, there I studied, it was my chance to write a tragedy. See here, my lords. He shows them a book. Which long forgot I found this other day. Now would your lordships favour me so much as but to grace me with your acting it. I mean each one of you to play a part. Assure you. It will prove most passing strange, and wondrous plausible to that assembly. What, would you have us play a tragedy? Why, Nero thought it no disparagement, and kings and emperors have tan delight to make experience of their wits in plays. Nay, be not angry, good Hieronimo. The prince but asked a question. In faith, Hieronimo, and you be in earnest, I'll make one. And I another. Now, my good lord, could you entreat your sister, Bellimperia, to make one? For what's a play without a woman in it? Little entreaty shall serve me, Hieronimo, for I must needs be employed in your play. 
why this is well i tell you lordings it was determined to have been acted by gentlemen and scholars too such as could tell what to speak and now it shall be played by princes and courtiers such as can tell how to speak if as it is our country manner you will but let us know the argument that shall i roundly the chronicles of spain record this written of a knight of rhodes he was betrothed and wedded at the length to one Perseida, an italian dame whose beauty ravished all that her beheld especially the soul of soliman who at the marriage was the chiefest guest by sundry means sought soliman to win perseida's love and could not gain the same then gan he break his passion to a friend one of his bashaws whom he held full dear her had this bashaw long solicited and saw she was not otherwise to be won but by her husband's death this knight of rhodes whom presently by a treachery he slew she stirred with an exceeding hate therefore as cause of this slew soliman and to escape the bashaw's tyranny did stab herself and this the tragedy oh excellent but say hieronimo what then became of him that was the barshaw mary thus moved with remorse of his misdeeds ran to a mountain top and hung himself but which of us is to perform that part oh that will i my lords make no doubt of it i'll play the murderer i warrant you for i already have conceded that and what shall i great soliman the turkish emperor and i erastus the knight of rhodes and i perseida chaste and resolute and here my lords are several abstracts drawn for each of you to note your parts and act it as occasions offered you you must provide a turkish cap a black mustachio and a falchion gives a paper to balthazar you with a cross like to a knight of rhodes gives another to lorenzo and madam you must attire yourself he giveth bellimperia another like phoebe flora or the huntress which to your discretion shall seem best and as for me my lords i'll look to one and with the ransom that the viceroy sent so furnish and perform this tragedy as all the world shall say hieronimo was liberal and gracing of it so hieronimo methinks a comedy were better a comedy fie comedies are fit for common wits but to present a kingly troop withal give me a stately written tragedy tragedia connotata fitting kings containing matter and not common things my lords all this must be performed as fitting for the first night's revelling the italian tragedians were so sharp of wit that in one hour's meditation they would perform anything in action and well it may for i have seen the like in paris amongst the french tragedians in paris mass and well remembered there's one thing more that rests for us to do what's that hieronimo forget not anything each one of us must act his part in unknown languages that it may breed the more variety as you my lord in latin i in greek you in italian and for because i know that bellimperia hath practised the french in courtly french shall all her phrases be you mean to try my cunning then hieronimo but this will be a mere confusion and hardly shall we all be understood it must be so for the conclusion shall prove the invention and all was good and i myself in an oration and with a strange and wondrous show besides that i will have there behind a curtain assure yourself shall make the matter known and all shall be concluded in one scene for there's no pleasure tan in tediousness how like you this why thus my lord we must resolve to soothe his humours up on then hieronimo farewell till soon you'll ply this gear i warrant you exeunt all but hieronimo why so now shall i see the fall of babylon wrought by the heavens in this confusion and if the world like not this tragedy hard is the hap of old hieronimo Exit. Scene two. Enter Isabella with a weapon. Tell me no more, O oh monstrous homicides, since neither piety nor pity moves the king to justice or compassion. I will revenge myself upon this place, where thus they murdered my beloved son. She cuts down the arbor. 
down with these branches and these loathsome boughs of this unfortunate and fatal pine down with them isabella rent them up and burn the roots from whence the rest is sprung i will not leave a root a stalk a tree a bough a branch a blossom nor a leaf no not an herb within this garden plot a cursed complot of my misery fruitless for ever may this garden be barren the earth and blissless whosoe'er imagines not to keep it unmanured an eastern wind commixed with noisome airs shall blast the plants and the young saplings the earth with serpents shall be pestered and passengers for fear to be infect shall stand aloof and looking at it tell there murdered died the son of isabel ay here he died and here i him embrace see where his ghost solicits with his wounds revenge on her that should revenge his death hieronimo make haste to see thy son for sorrow and despair hath cited me to hear horatio plead with radamanth make haste hieronimo to hold excused thy negligence in pursuit of their deaths whose hateful wrath bereaved him of his breath ah nay thou dost delay their deaths forgivest the murderers of thy noble son and none but i bestir me to no end and as i curse this tree from further fruit so shall my womb be cursed for his sake and with this weapon will i wound the breast the hapless breast that gave horatio suck she stabs herself scene three enter hieronimo he knocks up the curtain enter the duke of castile how oh, now hieronimo where's your fellows that you take all this pain oh sir it is for the author's credit to look that all things may go well but good my lord let me entreat your grace to give the king the copy of the play this is the argument of what we show i will hieronimo one thing more my good lord what's that let me entreat your grace that when the train are passed into the gallery you would vouchsafe to throw me down the key i will hieronimo exit castile what are you ready balthazar bring a chair and a cushion for the king enter balthazar with a chair well done balthazar hang up the title our scene is rhodes what is your beard on half on the other is in my hand despatch for shame are you so long exit balthazar bethink thyself hieronimo recall thy wits recount thy former wrongs thou hast received by murder of thy son and lastly not least how isabel once his mother and thy dearest wife all woe be gone for him hath slain herself behooves thee then hieronimo to be revenged the plot is laid of dire revenge on then hieronimo pursue revenge for nothing wants but acting of revenge exit hieronimo scene four enter spanish king viceroy the duke of castile and their train now viceroy shall we see the tragedy of solomon the turkish emperor performed of pleasure by your son the prince my nephew don lorenzo and my niece who belimperia i and hieronimo are marshal at whose request they deign to dot themselves these be our pastimes in the court of spain here brother you shall be the bookkeeper this is the argument of that they show he giveth him a book gentlemen this play of hieronimo in sundry languages was thought good to be set down in english more largely for the easier understanding to every public reader enter balthazar belimperia and hieronimo bashaw that rhodes is ours yield heavens the honour and holy mahomet our sacred prophet and be thou graced with every excellence that solomon can give or thou desire but thy desert in conquering Rhodes is less than in reserving this fair Christian Perseda, blissful lamp of excellence, whose eyes compel like powerful adamant the warlike heart of Solomon to wait. See, Viceroy, that is Balthasar, your son, that represents the Emperor Solomon. How well he acts his amorous passion! 
Ay, Bell Imperia hath taught him that. That's because his mind runs all along Bell Imperia. Whatever joy earth yields, betide your majesty. Earth yields no joy without Perseida's love. Let then Perseida on your grace attend. She shall not wait on me, but I on her. Drawn by the influence of her lights, I yield. But let my friend, the Rhodian knight, come forth. Erasto, dearer than my life to me, that he may see Perseida, my beloved. Enter Erasto. Here comes Lorenzo. Look upon the plot, and tell me, brother, what part plays he. Ah, my Erasto, welcome to Perseida. Thrice happy is Erasto that thou livest. Rhodes' loss is nothing to Erasto's joy. Sith his Perseida lives, his life survives. Ah, Bashaw, here is love between Erasto and fair Perseida, sovereign of my soul. Remove Erasto, mighty Solomon, and then Perseida will be quickly won. Erasto is my friend, and while he lives, Perseida never will remove her love. Let not Erasto live to grieve great Solomon. Dear is Erasto in our princely eye. But if he be your rival, let him die. Why, let him die. So love commandeth me, yet grieve I that Erasto should so die. Erasto, Solomon saluteth thee, and lets thee wit by me his highness will. Which is it thou shouldest be thus employed? Stabs him. Ay me, Erasto, see Solomon, Erasto's slain. Yet liveth Solomon to comfort thee. Fair queen of beauty, let not favour die, but with a gracious eye behold his grief, that with Perseida's beauty is increased, if by Perseida his grief be not released. Tyrant, desist soliciting vain suits. Relentless are mine ears to thy laments, as thy butcher is pitiless and base, which seized on my Erasto harmless knight. Yet by thy power thou thinkest to command, and to thy power Perseida doth obey. But were she able, thus she would revenge thy treacheries on thee, ignoble prince. Stabs him. And on herself she would be thus revenged. Stabs herself. Well said, old marshal, this was bravely done. But Bel Imperia plays Perseida well. Were this in earnest, Bel Imperia, you would be better to my son than so. But now what follows for Hieronimo? Mary, this follows for Hieronimo. Here break we off our sundry languages, and thus conclude I in our vulgar tongue. Haply you think, but bootless are your thoughts that this is fabulously counterfeit, and that we do all as tragedians do, to die to-day for fashioning our scene the death of Ajax or some Roman peer, and in a minute starting up again, revived to please tomorrow's audience. No, princes, no, I am Hieronimo, the hopeless father of a hapless son, whose tongue is tuned to tell his latest tale, not to excuse gross errors in the play. I see your looks urge instance of these words. Behold the reason urging me to this shows his dead son see here my show look on this spectacle here lay my hope and here my hope hath end here lay my heart and here my heart was slain here lay my treasure here my treasure lost here lay my bliss and here my bliss bereft but hope heart treasure joy and bliss all fled, failed, died, yea, all decayed with this. From forth these wounds came breath that gave me life, they murdered me that made these fatal marks. The cause was love, whence grew this mortal hate. The hate? Lorenzo and young Balthazar. The love? My son to Belimperia. But night? The coverer of accursed crimes, with pitchy silence hushed these traitors' harms, and lent them leave, for they had sordid leisure, to take advantage in my garden plot. Upon my son, my dear Horatio! There, merciless, they butchered up my boy, and black, dark night to pale, dim, cruel death. He shrieks! 
I heard, and yet methinks I hear, his dismal outcry echo in the air. With sooner speed I hasted to the noise, where, hanging on a tree, I found my son, through girt with wounds and slaughtered as you see, and grieved, I think you, at this spectacle. Speak, Portuguese, whose loss resembles mine, if thou canst weep upon thy Balthazar, tis like I wailed for my Horatio. And you, my lord, whose reconciled son marched in a net, and thought himself unseen, and rated me for brain-sick lunacy, with God amend that mad Hieronimo. How can you brook our play's catastrophe? And here behold this bloody handkerchief, which at Horatio's death I weeping dipped with the river of his bleeding wounds, it as propitious see I have reserved, and never hath it left my bloody heart soliciting remembrance of my vow with these oh these accursed murderers which now performed my heart is satisfied and to this end the bashaw i became that might revenge me on lorenzo's life who therefore was appointed to the part and was to represent the knight of rhodes that i might kill him more conveniently so viceroy was this balthazar thy son that sully man which belimperia in person of Perseida murdered solely appointed to that tragic part that she might slay him that offended her poor belimperia missed her part in this for though the story saith she should have died yet i of kindness and of care to her did otherwise determine of her end but love of him whom they did hate too much did urge her resolution to be such and princes now behold hieronimo author and actor in this tragedy bearing his latest fortune in his fist and will as resolute conclude his part and gentles thus i end my play urge no more words i have no more to say he runs to hang himself oh hearken viceroy hold hieronimo brother my nephew and thy son are slain we are betrayed my balthazar is slain break up the doors run save hieronimo they break in and hold hieronimo hieronimo do but inform the king of these events upon mine honour thou shalt have no harm viceroy i will not trust thee with my life which i this day have offered to my son accursed wretch why stayest thou him that was resolved to die speak traitor damned bloody murderer speak for now i have thee i will make thee speak why hast thou done this undeserving deed why hast thou murdered my balthazar why hast thou butchered both my children thus but are you sure they are dead ay slave too sure what and yours too ay all are dead not one of them survive nay then i care not come and we shall be friends let us lay our heads together see here's a goodly noose will hold them all oh damned devil how secure he is secure why dost thou wonder at it i tell thee viceroy this day i have seen revenge and in that sight am grown a prouder monarch than ever sat under the crown of spain had i as many lives as there be stars as many heavens to go to as those lives i'd give them all ay and my soul to boot but i would see thee ride in this red pool Oh, good words! As dear to me was my Horatio as yours, or yours, or yours, my lord, to you. My guiltless son was by Lorenzo slain, and by Lorenzo and that Balthazar, upon whose souls may heavens be yet avenged with greater far than these afflictions. But who were thy confederates in this? That was thy daughter, Belimperia, for by her hand my Balthazar was slain. I saw her stab him. Why speak'st thou not? what lesser liberty can kings afford than harmless silence then afford it me sufficeth i may not nor i will not tell thee fetch forth the tortures traitor as thou art i'll make thee tell indeed thou mayest torment me as his wretched son hath done in murdering my horatio but never shall thou force me to reveal the thing which i have vowed inviolate and therefore in despite of all thy threats pleased with their death and eased with their revenge first take my tongue and afterwards my heart he bites out his tongue 
oh monstrous resolution of a wretch see viceroy he hath bitten forth his tongue rather than to reveal what we required yet can he write and if in this he satisfy us not we will devise the extremest kind of death that ever was invented for a wretch then he makes signs for a knife to mend his pen oh he would have a knife to mend his pen here and advise thee that thou write the troth look to my brother save hieronimo he with a knife stabs the duke and himself what age hath ever heard such monstrous deeds my brother and the whole succeeding hope that spain expected after my decease go bear his body hence that we may mourn the loss of our beloved brother's death that he may be entombed whatever befall i am the next the nearest last of all and thou don pedro do the like for us take up our hapless son untimely slain set me with him and he with woeful me upon the mainmast of a ship unmanned and let the wind and tide haul me along to Scylla's barking an untamed gulf or to the loathsome pool of acheron to weep my want for my sweet balthazar spain hath no refuge for a portingal the trumpets sound a dead march the king of spain mourning after his brother's body and the king of portingal bearing the body of his son scene five enter ghost and revenge ay now my hopes have end in their effects when blood and sorrow finish my desires horatio murdered in his father's bower vile cerberine by pedringano slain false pedringano hanged by quaint device fair isabella by herself misdone prince balthazar by belimperia stabbed the duke of castile and his wicked son both done to death by old hieronimo my belimperia fallen as dido fell and good hieronimo slain by himself ay these were spectacles to please my soul now will i beg at lovely proserpine that by the virtue of her princely doom i may consort my friends in pleasing sort and on my foes work just and sharp revenge i lead my friend horatio through those fields where never dying wars are still inured i'll lead fair isabella to that train where pity weeps but never feeleth pain i'll lead my belimperia to those joys that vestal virgins and fair queens possess i'll lead hieronimo where orpheus plays adding sweet pleasure to eternal days but say revenge for thou must help or none against the rest how shall my hate be shown this hand shall hail them down to deepest hell where none but furies bugs and tortures dwell then sweet revenge do this at my request let me be judge and doom them to unrest let loose poor titius from the vulture's gripe and let don cyprian supply his room placed on lorenzo on ixion's wheel and let the lover's endless pain surcease juno forgets old wrath and grants him ease hang balthazar about chimera's neck and let him there bewail his bloody love repining at our joys that are above let cerberine go roll the fatal stone and take from sisyphus his endless moan 
false pedringano for his treachery let him be dragged through boiling acheron and there live dying still in endless flames blaspheming gods and all their holy names then haste we down to meet thy friends and foes to place thy friends in ease the rest in woes for here though death hath end their misery i'll there begin their endless tragedy Axiant. end of act four end of the spanish tragedy by thomas kidd